Hello again gamers, I'm Glitched. This is going to be a full, comprehensive, up-to-date tutorial for the Kingdom Hearts 1 Any% percent speedrun on the PS2. This may be considered as the New Testament of the Teachings by DJ Salty Nuts. This tutorial will cover both the English and Japanese versions of this game, referred to as KH1E and 1J respectively. There are a lot of strategies that carry over between the two versions, but there are also a lot of minor differences. I'll be showing primarily English footage here, and whenever there is a difference present in the Japanese version, I'll show it right after the English strategy. If I don't show any Japanese footage for a boss fight or particular segment, just assume that it goes identically to the English version. Now there are a lot of different ways to perform a lot of these boss fights. Some are more advanced and skilled than others, but my goal here is just to teach you how to get through the run with minimal difficulties. I'll try to show the most optimal setups and strats for each fight first, followed by common mistakes and errors made in these segments, and what to do when things do go wrong. If I'm not clear enough in explaining any of these segments, feel free to reach out to me in the comments and I'll get back to you with an answer as soon as possible. But before we officially get started, I'm going to start this video with a question I'm asked very frequently as a speedrunner of the vanilla PS2 version of this game. This question is, why do you speedrun this game? Or more particularly, why don't you speedrun Kingdom Hearts Final Mix instead? It's about half the length of this run, and you can skip the cutscenes. Why would you ever choose the PS2 version over the most updated HD release? So, to me there's a lot of reasons to speedrun this version over Final Mix, or honestly just to speedrun it in general, alongside Final Mix even. This version of the game is really fun and unique, and a nice change of pace from the non-stop action, very execution focused run that I'd consider Final Mix's most popular speedrun category, beginner any percent to be. There's a lot of downtime in the run due to the unskippable cutscenes, and while some people may see this as a hindrance or an annoyance, I personally enjoy the downtime. It gives me time to talk to chat, time to get up and get a snack or go to the bathroom, surf the web and chill during a run, collect myself during difficult segments, and so on. A lot of people seem to think that you have to be sitting there, staring at the screen during the entire time these cutscenes are going on, but you really don't. You can really take that time to do whatever you like, and it's a really chill experience. In terms of uniqueness, in this version, Sora, Donald, and Goofy's balancing and abilities learned are totally different. Sora is far more evenly balanced in terms of strength throughout the run compared to his Final Mix counterparts. This is due to power-up chests being scattered evenly throughout the story. These power-up chests were replaced with AP-up chests in Final Mix to compensate for the addition of new abilities like Sliding Dash, Slap Shot, Hurricane Blast, Leaf Bracer, and so on. In the vanilla version, Goofy learns MP Gift much earlier, and it only costs 1 MP instead of 2. This blows the door wide open for completely different strategies for many of the late game fights. So, due to this specific balancing in the vanilla version, the boss fights are more often an even mix of execution and adaptation, and to me, is a little more fun than the primarily execution-focused style of beginner any percent. In that category, Sora starts with plus 8 extra strength and defense at the beginning of the game, so you're so strong and so fast that a lot of the most fun parts of the game are trivialized and brushed over in that category. I have tons of respect for beginner and all of its runners, but it's just not my thing. Not everyone's style of speedrun is the heavily execution-focused style of run, so if you're looking for something a little different than Final Mix, beginner especially, this is a good run to give a try. And last of all, for many of us, this was our very first Kingdom Hearts game and our first introduction to the series. For me, it's very fulfilling to run this version of the game that really started it all. This is the version I have so many memories with and grew up playing. I didn't get to play Final Mix until around 2014 or so, and while I really enjoyed my playthroughs of it, this is the version that really stuck with me. This is the version I went to any time I wanted to replay the game in my childhood or early teenage years, and because of this, I have a fondness for this game that can't be matched by Final Mix. I genuinely enjoy watching the cutscenes, seeing the original graphics, hearing the original MIDI soundtrack, seeing the original Heartless color palettes, and playing on the PS2 like I did all those years ago. I think once more people get around to giving this run a try for themselves, they'll see where I'm coming from and start to understand why I speedrun this game and why it's worth learning. So now that that's out of the way, let's get right into the tutorial. Got practice. 
Practice, 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 practice. Uh, practice. Yeah, if you have practice, it should be practiced. So keep practicing. <laughs> it's the only way you're going to get better. It's the only way you're going to be number one. Number one, anything. You be practice, practice, practice. Now, before we get anywhere into anything boss fight or segment related, you all need to learn the importance of practicing. If you practice your low air combos and get your air combo timing close to perfect in this game, this game is so free. It is so much easier than it would be if you were just winging it without any fundamentals. I should be including save states in the description and on speedrun.com, so take the save states from JJ, Go to Olympus Coliseum and practice, practice, practice. Please practice your air combos on this closed sign. You can practice them with Air Combo Plus and without Air Combo Plus, with any Keyblades that have varying range. You can even break it down, take it slow. Start by learning how to do low air hits with only one attack, and then bump it up to two, and then up to three, and then up to four. Just please practice this before you really get serious in this game. I know so many people who want to get good at KH1, but they never try to learn this and they never practice it, so they're always mid forever. But you are going to be a GOAT. If you're watching this video, you're going to be a fucking Chad. So just please practice this and you'll be a GOAT. Here we are at Dive to Heart, the iconic introduction to the game. Here's where we're introduced to the basics of the controls, how to move around, how to attack, where we fight our first battles, and so on. So at Dive to Heart, we choose our ability progression route and our stat prioritization in the form of a weapon we use for this segment. And this is at the cost of sacrificing another of the main stats. The main stats in this game are defense, magic, and strength. We choose to prioritize the sword here because the extra strength we're given goes a very long way in keeping us strong enough to deal solid damage throughout the run. And we also want the specific ability route that sword gives us. So we want to run forward and jump to grab the sword, confirm our selection, and when it asks us to give something up, we're going to give up the shield here. This is because giving up the shield doesn't really hurt us in any way. Our defense is fine throughout the run. We don't really have to worry about it that much because we have Donald to heal us and we get heal ourselves. So we're just going to go ahead and confirm that selection. Now if we were to give up the staff there, we would be short AP at some point in the run and it would kind of be a hindrance to us. So we're just going to go with shield as our sacrifice. So next up we're going to be on a pillar that forces us to fight our first ever Heartless. Uh, these Heartless fights can be kind of annoying, but they're quite simple. Once we land here, we're just going to want to mash X pretty much as fast as we can. We have a couple text prompts to go through. And once these text prompts are done, it's going to prompt us to attack. So mashing X through this or circle on JP will be just fine. And once we mash through this text, a wave of Heartless will appear. This first Heartless on the left side... A lot of the time it jumps, I usually attack it with an aerial combo because it's faster, but when it doesn't jump, um, it's a little slower, and I'd prefer to do a ground combo in that situation. So you want to make sure that you're on the right side of Cinderella's dress here. This is because it lines you up perfectly to take out two shadows in one combo. So after you master this text, run up and try to do a quick ground combo to take out both of those shadows at the same time. And then I usually do a couple quick air hits to take out the remaining ones if they've separated. This keeps them stunned and prevents them from going underground on me. But normal ground combos work just as well. So up next here, we're going to want to walk up to this door and examine it. Uh, you want to either press up on the D-pad or the right analog stick, whichever you prefer, to 
go to your command menu's bottom option. The bottom option is your interact button in this game. It is not the triangle button like it is in Final Mix. So we want to interact with this treasure chest and open it as well. We want to hold down and jump right as the animation ends. This will close the gap between us and the barrel. So on the barrel, we want to do as low of an air combo as possible and pick up the potion, hopefully on landing. And we do the same for the smaller barrel, but you can hold down and away towards the door and jump after you destroy the barrel. This will close the gap between you and the door just a little bit as well. It saves a tiny bit of time. Not necessary, but if you're trying to be optimal, it's the best way to go. So from here, we're going to be selecting our EXP route by talking to Titus, Waka, and Selfie. So usually what we do here, we talk to Selfie first, since she's right in front of us. So we're going to talk to Selfie and just choose the top option here. Go immediately to Titus, choose the top option as well. And then from Titus, we go to Waka, and we want to choose the bottom option here, simply because it has less text. It makes this part a little bit faster, just barely. But hey, gotta go fast, so it's worth it. So we're going to be using the Dawn route here. This makes it to where we get EXP faster before level 50. We will finish the run around level 49, 48 or so, so this is the perfect route for us in the run. So here's our first actual somewhat difficult fight of the run. Uh, it's really trivial. It doesn't really matter if you don't get a fast fight here because it's a five hour run. If you lose a few seconds in a Shadows fight, it's not going to kill you. But I'm going to show you how to do it the best I can. So these Shadows are going to circle around you at the start. You're going to want to move to the left side a tiny bit. Once they jump on you and lock on and do a ground combo. Try to destroy as many of them as you can in one go. And if you can't get them all right away, try to group them up. That should take care of it. Then you want to move to that specific spot that I'm standing on because the game is going to create a save point for you. If you're already standing on the save point, it will prevent you from having to move over to it. So it saves a tiny bit of time as well. So from here, we have the option to change our camera. So what I usually do is I pause here, go to config, and switch to manual camera. This is because auto camera in this game is very hard to control and very wonky. I prefer controlling the camera completely on my own. And we just want to run in as straight of lines as we can up to dark side here. Dark side is quite a simple boss himself. Uh, we just want to pretty much go as ham as possible on his left hand. There's a little bit of strategy to doing it as quickly as you can that I'll try to get into detail with, but it's a quite simple boss. So at the very beginning of this fight here, Dark side is going to lift his arm back and pound into the ground. We want to walk up to about Bell's chin here and do two fast air combos. Then we want to move back to the side of her face, and then as soon as he pounds his arm into the ground, start going ham. Go do as low of air combos as you can. If you clank on shadows, unfortunately, you do not do damage. It's a pretty whack feature here. But still not too slow of a fight here. So yeah, just want to take care of Dark Side, and then we can head to Destiny Islands. Now, Destiny Islands. You're going to be seeing this place quite a lot if you're going to grind this game seriously. Home of the 40-minute movies. So, turn around and walk down the slope to come towards this log. You're going to want to pick that up. So we have to collect the pieces for the raft. And if I see any of y'all throw that barrel instead of doing this nice, clean Toji hop right here getting smacked, jump up to the next platform here grab the cloth on the wall and you're going to want to try to make this jump onto this treetop and jump over to the other platform we're going to grab the rope and we're going to jump straight off in front of titus and just run straight forward until we reach the fish once we reach the fish it actually has collision so we want to jump over it and then just start quick swimming up to riku's little island here we want to jump and grab a hold of the ladder and at a 
up right angle, hit X to attack or circle to grab that next log quickly. Once we've gotten everything, we're just going to give it to Kyrie to head to day two. At the start of day two here, we're going to want to jump off of this bridge and grab the three fish behind us. I like to run away from selfie before I lock on to these next two fish. Locking on helps you track them, but if you're too close to selfie, it messes up your whole camera. You're going to want to run up and jump up to the secret cavern here. Inside the secret place, there's a mushroom we're going to have to collect to give to Kyrie to get to day three. Final day. So, it's right next to the little drawings on the wall here. Once you pick this up, you're going to have a cutscene with Ansem. But after it's over, hold straight left. If you adjust your camera in this room, it's going to mess up your movement. But once you get into this little tunnel, you're good to go. Just walk your way out. From here, we're going to want to go up left a bit to the left of Waka and jump up to this cabin roof. Jump over to the tree and then jump on top of the treetop to grab the seagull egg. You can attack the tree on your way down to see if a yellow coconut drops, but 99% of the time it won't. From here, just talk to Riku to initiate the race. We just named the gummy ship Excalibur. It really doesn't matter. It's just fast to press start and X to confirm that. And as for the Riku race, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to win because you really do need the money uh, that you get from the pretty stone here in the race. So once the race begins, you want to make sure that you keep a lead on Riku. Do not bait him into falling down here because it kind of messes up the race a little bit. You're going to want to jump on top of this ladder if you can. Climb your way up and grab the zip line. Do not press any buttons at all. This treetop jump can get kind of tricky, and if you do fall, it's okay. Just jump to the right here, and as long as you're ahead of Riku, it's all good. You've got to touch the star tree, and then just jump your way back to Kairi through the treetops here. Once you've reached Kairi... Just do a little jump up to her and it should end the race. If you get a fast fade out, that's cool, but it doesn't really matter. It only saves a few frames. It's really not that important. Now we're going to be collecting the rest of the mushrooms and coconuts, as well as the fresh water to get off of Destiny Islands. So just head straight forward past the staircase and push this rock here. There's a mushroom hiding behind this rock. So you're gonna wanna grab that. And you're going to need two coconuts. So this middle tree here gives the best results for coconuts. I like to do low air combos on it and switch lock-ons with L2 as I'm falling from the air combo. This will tell me if a coconut has actually fallen. I got really bad coconut luck here, but it's all good. You just want to get the two coconuts so you can get out of here. I like to talk to Kyrie on my way back so that I can get the bottle to collect the drinking water. So I'm going to jump up here and grab the last mushroom and jump down here to grab the drinking water. Once we've gotten everything, all that's left to do is deliver it to Kairi and head out. On the final day, we're going to be meeting up with Riku to get the Keyblade. So we're going to want to hold right and tilt our camera to walk down that staircase there. Jump on top of this little wall and then on top of the cabin roof. So there's a couple cutscenes here. This cutscene, you actually have to mash through. If you don't mash through it, you will lose time. This cutscene will say something like Keyblade. Keyblade. If you don't mash through this, you'll be standing here waiting for the cutscene to advance. So just mash through that and head over to the secret place. Avoid any shadows. You don't need to kill any and you don't need to get hit by any. If you want to jump on top of the roof and fall down here and then just jump back up to enter the secret place.
Once you walk through this tunnel, it's going to automatically start a cutscene and send you to the Dark Side 2 fight. Now, there's a couple different ways to do Dark Side 2. Uh, there's the deflect method, which is faster but more difficult, and then there's the left hand method. I'll show both. I personally do the right hand deflect method. So here's how it goes. You want to walk up and lock onto the right hand, do a full air combo, and wait for his hand to stabilize, and do one, two, one, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, and keep that rhythm up until he's done shooting projectiles. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Now, once he's done, do full air combo, and then just get as many hits out as you can. When his hands are close to being raised up, you can't really fit a finisher in, it'll whiff, so I do single jabs. And a full air combo should take him out here if you've deflected enough. Now if you want to go and do the left hand strats, which are a little bit safer, I do a full combo on the left hand, followed by a couple air hits, and then I just go ham with full air combos. You don't have to do them at any kind of rhythm or pattern, just go ham with full air combos the best you can. If you're on the inner side of his hand, you usually don't get hit by any projectiles. But yes, once he raises his hand here, I don't go for finishers because they more often than not whiff there. So I just go for single jabs. Once again, when he pulls his hand down, two air combos and go ham immediately when he ground pounds. It's a little bit slower, but it works just as fine. So Faster, deflect method, a little slower, left hand, but either one is good. Left hand only loses about 10 to 15 seconds. It's not that bad, but if you want to go fast, definitely recommend the right hand deflex. So we're in Traverse Town now. We want to exit this alleyway here and head up to the second district to kill some shadows. We have to kill five shadows to make the Leon fight available for us to start. So it's going to prompt you to go to Sid's shop. Just ignore this, smash through it, and go into the next district. And there's a shadows fight similar to the one in Dive to Heart here. So I'm going to lock on immediately. It locks onto the left Heartless, and I move slightly right this time. Do a ground combo to take out as many as you can. I took out three there, but you want to make sure that you take out five. If you don't take out five, Leon will not be there to fight you. So after you've taken out five, if you want to kill Leon, which I'm going to do in this example, ignore these Heartless, don't take any damage. I'm going to walk into Sid's shop and just mash through a bit of text here. After you mash through this text and leave the building, that's when the Leon fight begins. So in this example, I'm going to be showing you how to kill Leon, given his different AI patterns. He can so either shoot you with a fireball, or he can jump at you and, and slash you. At you. So I'll show you how, how to you deal with both to situations here. Um, they're pretty much the same. You just have to react to the very beginning of the fight and decide what to do. Killing Leon is a little bit more difficult and a little bit more tight than just dying to him, but you don't have to rely on Heartless RNG to damage you. So, if Leon decides to fireball you, walk forward and deflect it back at him. You have to learn the timing for this. It does take practice. Once you've deflected it, air combo him into the corner and do as low and as fast of air combos as you can. It should keep him stun locked completely. Then that should be a quick and easy fight. No way. Now if he lose. jumps, you're going to want to hit him one, two, one, two, three, as quickly as you can. That has to be as fast as possible. Follow him as he backs up into the corner and repeat the very quick low air combos. So if you do decide to kill Leon here, you will get a slightly longer cutscene. It's about six seconds longer. I'll show both cutscenes to compare. But... This trades off with getting an extra elixir from Leon that you can either sell for money or use during the run, as well as not having to rely on the RNG of taking damage from shadows or getting killed by Leon. Sometimes he likes to pace around before he actually does the finishing blow on you. Looks like things are worse than we thought. A lot worse. On the other hand, dying to him isn't so bad either, so I'll show you how you would approach that as well. 
You just want to take some extra damage from these shadows in the second room here. You can also kill an extra shadow here if you're not confident that you got five, but just make sure your source HP is even with the middle bar of his MP. If it's even or below the middle bar, Leon will kill you in one hit. So I'll just go ahead and show what happens here when you die to Leon. There's two different ways to die to Leon. Either he jumps forward and slashes you, or he shoots a fireball at you. So in the event he shoots a fireball, just stand still and take a tiny step forward. If he jumps, same deal. Tiny step forward and he should kill you. Here is the shorter variation of the cutscene. Hey, you found it. Nice going, Leon. Still. It looks like things are worse than we thought. A lot worse. So now we're going to be in the green room. After a lengthy cutscene, we talk to Yuffie, grab this chest on the table, and talk to Leon. You can skip that chest if you killed him, but it doesn't matter either way. More items, the better for money's sake. From here, we're just going to walk over to the third district. To get ready to fight guard armor and meet up with Donald and Goofy. In this instance, just try to run straight lines, you know, cut your corners, the typical movement strategies. I like to try to stay to the corners as best I can, then once I actually get my pathing right, stay on a straight line. So once we meet up with Donald and Goofy, right before the guard armor fight, we actually have a soldier's fight to take care of. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You could either despawn the soldiers, or you could fight the soldiers like normal. Most people are going to be more familiar with the regular route of fighting the soldiers, but I'm going to show the way that I do it first. I mash triangle at the start and run backwards while locking onto the far left soldier, mashing triangle again. Triangle tells Donald to attack, and I just run my way over to this moon on the wall, and that should despawn the soldiers if you're quick enough. Now the alternative is to just take care of them normally. It takes six air hits to kill one soldier. Donald and Goofy are very helpful with their magic and shield attacks, so this could be just as fast. It's really just up to you. Now guard armor is a wall for a lot of new runners, so I'm going to go over a couple things on this fight that I feel a lot of new players struggle with. But I'm going to show the fight when it goes well first, and then I'll show the things that go wrong and how to combat those things. So when the fight begins, run up to the right side and lock onto the right foot. Do two air combos to get this clank. Do light air hits with no finishers to avoid staggering early. When he ground pounds, jump over it and go for the stagger on his right foot again. This whole time you want to be mashing triangle to get down on the Goofy to do some extra damage. Avoid the next ground pound and on the second stagger he will knock over. So when he knocks over, try to get some even damage on all of his limbs, but put some focus on his hands because they are the most annoying part to take care of. As you can see, Easy to whiff on them, they move around a lot. You just want to take care of them as soon as possible. Always jump over that ground pound and just focus hard on his limbs first. He's going to enter an invincible state here. So he will stop having invincibility right about now when he starts spinning. Once he starts spinning, mash triangle for Donald and Goofy to go in and finish off with an air combo. Now one thing I noticed that happens to a lot of newer players is they don't get the clank at the beginning of the fight and it makes everything go wrong. If you miss this clank, you can just go in like that with a simple air hit and you'll actually land the clank. So just proceed with the fight as normal, but if you do miss the stagger here, the fight goes even more wrong. His hands get disconnected and everything gets crazy. His hands are easily the most annoying parts of his body to hit, especially if they're separated. So I focus on the middle body if I disconnect the hands, but if I notice I clank them like you saw there, I'll start focusing on them because I want to take these out as quickly as possible. 
you isolate the hands like this and you've got them stunned and out of the way take care of them the best you can but then start focusing again on his middle piece Again, if you miss the clank, it's okay. Just go in with another simple air hit. Now you've got the fight somewhat back in your control. Now follow simple procedures. Just air combo the foot, take it out the best you can, and wait for his invincibility to pass here before telling Donald and Goofy to attack and before attacking yourself. So once he starts spinning like this, that's when he's vulnerable again. So just start going ham and that's the fight. This fight really isn't that bad with practice. It just takes a lot of getting used to and a lot of grinding before you have it kind of consistent. But as I've said before, if you master low air combos early, this fight is easy peasy. After guard armor, we're going to get a couple cutscenes with the bootleg organization 13 of Disney characters and then we are going to be greeted by the Final Fantasy homies. They're going to give us 100 money. It's a lot less than the 500 money we get in Final Mix. So because of that, we're going to have to go out of our way to get extra money in other ways. I'll show you some of these ways in a moment here. But for now, we're going to be getting our first ability from Donald and Goofy, as well as magic. We're going to get fire and dodge roll. Specifically, dodge roll is your main source of movement throughout the rest of the game. So for our first menu, we're going to want to swap Sora's Potion with Goofy's Ether if he still has it. Equip Brave Warrior and dodge roll. If Goofy doesn't have his Ether, it's fine. We can make do. It's just going to be a little annoying. So jump over this cafe stand here and grab this postcard in the safe. That is one of the things we're going to need to make up for that lack of money. Roll over this little ledge here. We could do that in 30 FPS. It's pretty dope. And then head over to the gate because we're going to do the gate clip. The gate clip does work in this game. It also works in the Japanese version. So once we interact with our first trinity here, hold up on the analog stick and don't let go. That'll let us clip through the wall. But that has to be the first trinity we've interacted with. It won't work otherwise. So now we get to talk to Leon early about the gummy piece that we would have acquired from some of the other worlds we will visit next. We'll also be able to get the summon stone for Simba a little early. So this just makes us save time so we don't have to go out of our way and talk to Leon two separate times after we get these things. So he's going to give us the earth shine. That's for Simba later. But we don't need it for quite a bit, so we're just going to head over to Merlin's now. Make sure you roll over here and try to jump to get a little extra distance. Quick swim out. And then yes, just head to the third district here. Try to keep your lines as straight as possible with your movement. The straighter the lines, the better the movement. As I say this, I screw up, but I be like that sometimes. So just... You know, cut your corners, straight lines, all the way up to the third district here. And we're going to do what everybody calls the swag fire, but it's just the optimal fire. Just jump off, and as you're about to land, hit that door with a fire. This time you want to roll up this slope and grab this blue trinity. This is going to give you some extra money as well to cover for that lack of money. Make sure you get that camping set and all of the money here. It's very important. Just go through the fire door here and just take care of the platforming to Merlin's house. Just make sure you're taking your time here. Don't get too hasty because if you fall in the water, it's going to lose a lot of time. So we just head inside and Merlin does his thing. Now that Merlin's all posted up here, deliver the poo book for the story flag to him later. We can bring summons to Fairy Godmother. But for now, we don't need to do any of that. So we're just going to roll behind us on top of this blue trinity and collect the money and the mega ether from this blue trinity. This mega ether is going to help us out quite a bit during Power Wilds, and the money just helps fund us to get our gummy parts. Now we've done everything we can in Traverse Town, so let's exit the world. 
So once you've mashed through Chip and Dale's text, press square to enter the gummy garage and mash X all the way through to the edit screen. On the edit screen, press X to select the gummy, square to choose it all, and triangle to delete it. Place your cockpit with X, press L1 to select the gun, and then L1 again and find the engine. Place it together like this, and now you should be moving a lot faster during the gummy missions. Another thing I should note here, since we don't have that 500 money from Leon and we don't get to sell synthesis items in this game, we gotta pick up extra gummy pieces here. The protect G's, the dispel G's. Pick these up and actually kill these gummies because we could sell them if we end up short money so that we can get our own gummy pieces later. These little purple gummy ships here, they carry the ones that you'd like to get just because they're more towards the top of the list when selling them. You don't have to scroll to find them. And here we are at Wonderland. After the cutscene, just roll up to the door here and hold forward. This should push us through the loading screen. After this little cutscene here, we're just going to want to press square to roll and slightly tap left. This will activate the next scene. So before we shrink down, push this bed. Do not forget to push this bed. If you do, you're going to have a bad time. So now, drink the small drink and roll off the table into the Queen's Court. Another lengthy cutscene here, but after it's over, we're just gonna mash through this text and hold straight left and roll twice. There's a few ways to handle the Heartless in this next room. I'll show the despawn first. Just roll up to this mushroom, hugging the right wall there. Jump up and keep rolling into the corner on the lily pad until the command menu turns blue. Once the command menu turns blue, the Heartless have despawned. Grab the blue trinity on your way down because you want that ether for power wilds and the potion and tent for money. Open the footprint chest and roll back to the court. Killing the Heartless is a little more difficult since we don't have as much MP, but... Just try to lock on and target swap to kill three of them, and make Donald kill the rest by locking on and pressing triangle. Hug that right wall. If you don't, you're going to spawn more Heartless. Grab the Trinity and the items from the Trinity once again, the footprints, and head out. When choosing evidence, you want to choose the box that appears first once they've all bunched up together. Another way you could find the box is by telling which one touches the ground first after they've all fallen down. So as you can see here, it was the leftmost middle box. This box will contain the soldier. If the box contains Donald, Goofy, or both, that will restrict them from being in the fight, and it will make the fight a little bit more annoying. They won't be there to throw you potions in case you get hit, and they won't be there to distract the card soldiers from attacking you while you're trying to break the Crank Tower. The Crank Tower breaks with slow air combos. For some reason, the Cranks on the tower don't really register that they're being hit unless the attacks are spaced out pretty well. So just do slow, spaced out air combos here to break each crank. Donald and Goofy should take care of the card soldiers and distract them for the most part. Now once the cranks are all broken, it kinda is difficult to get the target for the crank tower to appear. You have to actually hit it a few more times for the target to appear. But once it breaks, Make sure you pick up as much money as you can. This money is very important for our gummy route. After that's over, go back to the Lotus Forest and head on over to the Tea Party Room. There's an optional elixir in the Tea Party Room. I don't recommend grabbing it, but if you really want it, just roll over to that pink sign to the right of the painting and interact with the chair right next to it. It's dropping elixir, but I'm going to skip it. 
In the next room, you want to follow my movements exactly. This is to not spawn any Heartless here. So roll up against the chimney and light the torch. So just press square to roll, touch the next torch. And after this, follow my movements again precisely. I'm walking in a very specific path to not spawn any Heartless here. Now you want to get ready to activate this switch and walk up to it and activate it as quickly as possible. Before Trick Master, make sure you and your entire party have full MP and that your ether is hotkeyed. Going to use it during the fight. Roll up to the shadow on the edge here and jump to grab the ledge. And here we're going to start Trick Master. Trick Master in PS2 is way less cringe than Trick Master in Final Mix. He is so much easier to deal with, but he can still kind of be a pain. I'm going to show a couple different ways to take care of him. So the first method I suggest here is walking up and hitting him with two fires. If you can get an extra, it's cool. After that, dodge the attack and jump in on him. Or you could walk up to the edge of the table, jump at him and do a full air combo. But if you do this and you don't crit, you'll have to hit one more time to knock him down. Once knocked down, always mash triangle in between your air combos because Donald and Goofy do a ton of extra damage in this fight and make it way faster. You get three air combos every time he's knocked down. Roll to the back door here and hit him with two fires. That will always knock him over for the first four cycles. Repeat the three air combos and repeat the fires. So this is the third knockdown. One, two, three. One, two, three. And on the last finisher, don't jump or else you'll clank like that. You want to just press X to naturally rise up with the last combo. Just like that. So now this is the last cycle. Empty your MP, use your ether as quickly as you can, and walk up and shoot him with more fires. This should knock him down and finish the fight. A couple things that commonly go wrong here is people lack damage on Trickmaster and mess up the cycles, or they completely miss the fires or light his torches with them instead. If this happens, or if Trickmaster is kind of even with that bunny chair, or to the right of it, he's going to start moving to a place that's going to make him harder to hit. The last place you want him to go is to the right, where he starts moving towards the stove, because once he starts moving towards the stove, everything gets extremely sus. He starts lighting his torches to prepare to shoot fireballs, his hitboxes get really annoying to hit, but if you did enough damage before he gets over here, as you can see, you can still win the fight just fine. But worst case scenario, if you didn't do enough damage before he gets over here, everything gets terrible. He starts hitting you with fireballs. He starts jumping around and tucking his hitbox away behind clanks. Everything is awful. So really all you can do in this situation is wait for him to turn around, start charging up his fire again. You can hit him with fires during this, and whenever he bends down to hit you with fireballs, you can hit him to knock him down once more and call Donald and Goofy to help. But that's really all you can do. This fight is kind of sink or swim. So just practice knowing the arc of your fire hitbox as well as the length and how far it goes before fizzling out and just how to do these air combos optimally. Also practice getting used to using Donald and Goofy. Donald and Goofy are very important in this game. They make so many boss fights so much better. Anyone who says they're useless is capping. So that is Wonderland. Very short world, deceptively so, from casual playthroughs. People usually get lost here all the time. But only two boss fights that aren't too difficult once you get the hang of things. After Trickmaster dies, it's going to give you an Ifrit's Horn, which you're going to sell for money later, and you're going to get Blizzard from the Cheshire Cat. So just go ahead and leave as soon as possible and head over to Deep Jungle. Now that we're in Deep Jungle, we're going to start seeing where some of the differences between the English version and Japanese version come into play. 
English Sora is a little bit more tanky than Japanese Sora defensively at this point in the game. So due to this, dying to Sabor is slower. We're going to actually kill Sabor. To do this, we're going to dodge her first slash here and just whack her with low air combos the best we can without finishers. Once she starts roaring, we just keep up the jabs until the end of the roar and finish her into the corner. Keep up the finishers into the corner. If she breaks out, then go ahead and finish her off with some fires. Sometimes you can't always get her into the corner like that, like you'd like to, or she breaks out a little earlier. In that case, what we would do is just knock her with some fires earlier on. Empty out your fire gauge if you have to. It's not that big of a deal. Just like this. I'm gonna jump in on you, that's normal. And then try to get her into the corner. Now for JP, we just die to support because we're so much weaker defensively. So we run up and take the first slash. Wait for her to jump behind us and tap forward for that second slash. Otherwise, it will whiff and we won't be able to die on time. After Sabor and a bunch of cutscenes, we're going to have Tarzan in our party. So here's another point of menuing here. Want to jump off the treehouse and unequip Raging Boar, Asp's Bite, Wind Armor, and equip Critical Plus. You can press L1 to go to the bottom of the abilities there. Jump up and grab this Mega Aether. This is also important for your money route. This is what's going to be sold for 50 money to get the gummy pieces later. Fall down into Jungle Slider and quit the minigame. Once you quit the minigame, you're taken to the camp right away. At the camp, you want to pick up all the slides, so just follow my movements here. Once you've gotten all the slides inside the tent, after another cutscene and a little bit of mashing, you're going to want to keep Donald and Tarzan in your party. Tarzan has Cure at this point in the game. It's very useful. And Donald has Blizzard and Fire, so it helps with things like Power Wilds and boss fights. So you're going to want to show the slides to Jane, mash through all of this, and then... We will head over to Hippo Hop. Hippo Hop is somewhat difficult for a lot of people. What you would do here is just go to the Hippo's Lagoon. You have to do this quite quickly or else you'll miss the cycle for the Hippo. Jump off of the first Hippo, roll, roll, swim and jump in the same motion. Then you should be able to make it over to the vine just in time before the hippo goes underwater. After another cutscene with Tarzan, you're going to want to go up to the treetops and to the treehouse. Just go ahead and jump up to the vines here. Now one thing to note, if you jump too early here, you're going to fall off. So a lot of the time people just prefer to just walk up to the vine. But if you jump at the right time there, you save a few frames because you get into the loading screen a little earlier. Just roll up to the treehouse and watch another cutscene. After the cutscene, jump off and turn around before you land so that you're facing the jungle slider. Hop on in and quit the minigame once again. Once you're back at the camp, just head to the tent, watch another cutscene with Clayton being cringe, and then it's time for Power Wilds, one of my favorite segments. I'm going to go a little more in-depth with the monkeys, because there's a lot to pay attention to that a lot of people overlook with these creatures. Just blast these guys with short hop blizzards. If you do it fast enough, they won't separate, and you can take them all out within three blizzards. Do not step back before doing those blizzards like in FM. It doesn't work like that in this game. Head to the Hippo's Lagoon, jump up to the vines, and you can jump when the vines text appears to save a few frames on loading screens. Now roll over to the safe, touch it, and interact with that flower. 
You have to touch that save. You need magic to fight these monkeys. Quit the minigame to teleport to the other side. And I'm going to explain some of how the Power Wild AI works. So Power Wilds always jump back after they've attacked. Pay attention to the one I'm locked onto. So after every attack of theirs, they usually jump backwards. If you attack them, but you don't fully finish them, they'll usually retaliate with a slash like that. I just walk out of the way, bait it out, and then attack them. If you attack it too early, you'll clank. One thing that also happens is, when they jump back, they usually jump on top of you. Or if they slide, they usually jump as well. So just dodge out of the way, and then you can get your combos off on them. And now that that's out of the way, I roll, switch lock-ons twice, and blast two blizzards. Try to get as many with the next few blizzards as you can. And your party members will do a great job of cleaning up here with you. After the first room, make sure you refill your MP. Usually, your ether will be in your inventory here. If it's not, check your item hotbar. And we are not going to enter this room from the top here like they do in Final Mix. That messes up the patterns of the Power Wilds. We don't have as powerful of a blizzard to take them out, so we need to go this way. And once we see a group of them, just try to hit as many of them with that blizzard as you can. Notice how I dodged out of the way of that slide before attacking him. If I would have went for the attack, I would have whiffed. So one thing we can do here, we can use our Mega Aether to refill us for the next few rooms. Get this nice, clean Toji Hop and jump over the edge to the next room here. You can do the FM jump if you really aren't comfortable with Toji hopping, but I recommend if you're gonna play this game, you better do the Toji hop, buddy. It's swag. But always use that Mega Ether before this room. Once you land, do two blizzards. I usually try to hit both sides of the Power Wild group so that they're only one blizzard away from dying. Just like that, Donald cleaned him up for me. And use your last ether before this room. Here. This is so that you can clean this room up quickly. And this is pretty much why we picked up all those ethers along the way. I attack twice here to get a little more MP and have Donald finish them off. Back up to the corner. And once they've moved in closely, I hit them with the blizzards. That's Power Wilds. That is a very... Tough segment. That segment demands a lot of adaptation and just understanding of Power Wild AI. So definitely practice that one a lot. Now we just gotta head back to the tent to get ready to fight Sabor for the second time. Always refill your MP here. You're gonna need it. But I just roll over to the save, refill, and walk out the door. Just roll straight forward. And for Sabor, there's a couple different ways this can go. First, I'll show you the gamer way. I usually back up a little bit, roll, and shoot some fires. They'll hop in. You want to clank Sabor. Once you clank Sabor, treat her like you did in the original treehouse. Knock her into a corner or a wall and keep her in to that wall or corner. If Tarzan and Donald are attacking with you, the damage is insane. They do so much damage. It's crazy. But this is honestly usually how the fight goes. The fight doesn't go as pretty as that most of the time. When that happens, you're just going to want to deal with what you got. If you miss the clank, oh well. She's probably going to roar like she did in the treehouse. Try to keep her in the wall like I was doing previously. Mash triangle to get your party to come help you out. If she jumps into the bamboo... Just hit her with fires until she approaches you again. Once that happens, you just want to knock her away with low air combos like usual. But that's the last time we see Sabor, and she's going to drop us White Fang. White Fang is a pretty useful attack equip that we're going to use for pretty much the rest of the game here. After Sabor's been taken out, we're going to want to head back to the camp 
and make our way over to the vine swinging area to get to the treetops again. You don't have to go to the tent, just go straight to the vines. Jane and Turk were kidnapped in the last cutscene, so we gotta help them out. So as we're traveling up these vines, I always equip my White Fang here, so I don't forget it. This is the first area you can equip something. So go ahead and examine this flower to teleport back over to the other side of the vines. Hop up the vines, get ready for the black fruit fight. This fight's really easy. You just have to attack the fruit 15 times. So I usually do two empty rolls, square, square, and switch lock-ons twice. Alright, 15 hits. Now we gotta prepare for Clayton. So if you didn't equip it earlier, for whatever reason, make absolute sure you have White Fang on right now. You need to make sure you have that on. White Fang makes the fight so much better, so much faster, and you just need to have it on for the rest of the upcoming parts of the game. So just go ahead and hop over the edge here and we will have Clayton 1. Empty roll, center your camera, jab, 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 blizzard, blizzard. I do those blizzards to kill the power wild there. Usually it'll make me clank. It's really annoying. If this goes wrong, it's okay. Just make sure you keep Clayton in the corner. Don't let him throw a potion. If he throws a potion, this fight is gonna take forever. But just keep him in the corner and if you have to do jabs more than finishers, it's okay. So for the main attraction, big boy Clayton. Jump after the huh. Back up and do two full air combos. You want to try to knock the chameleon to the right side to get better positioning for corner comboing Clayton. After the animation of him revealing himself ends, finisher him and roll behind him. It'll make him jump behind you. Once Clayton's been knocked off of the chameleon, Mash triangle to get your party members to go ham with you and just go sicko mode on this dude. Seriously, just body him. Wombo combo this man. You need to use your finishers. Do not do that one-two thing in this game. It's not that great. You can, if you're in trouble, do the one-twos, but if you got him in the corner like this, go full ham, no cheese with the air combos. Finishers included. Now, when you saw me do the one-two air jabs, it was to keep him in the corner. Finishers often knock Clayton really far away. So, that is one instance where they can be used if he's not in a position to be corner comboed, but you still need to keep him locked down and keep control of him so he doesn't jump away. I'll try to demonstrate that here. So, go ahead and proceed with the fight as normal. Do the two finishers to get the chameleon to show himself. Now once you get the chameleon to jump behind you, you knock Clayton off and for some reason he's giving you a hard time when it comes to staying in the corner. You need to do those two air hits just to keep him aligned. See, I'll jump in front of him and kind of align myself with him to make sure I don't knock him out of the corner. But if you do knock him out, it's okay to do these one twos now because there's not really anywhere you can send him that won't be too far away from you. It's better to get the DPS when he's right there locked down in your hands. Something else that can make this fight go a little weird is knocking the chameleon into the left hand side of the screen rather than the right hand side. It just makes it to where his jump angle is kind of weird and he's more pressed up against the left side. This makes Clayton land on this little platform here and it just kind of isn't as good of a corner combo setup. FM players might be wondering why doesn't he do animation skip? That's why. For some reason, the way the camera is set up in this game, it's just weird, man. Like, animation skip rarely works for me. So I just ignore it, and I do the jump strat like this. It doesn't really lose that much time, and this isn't beginner, so it's not hella optimized yet. So we don't really have to do that just yet. But if someone can find out a way to make it consistent, by all means do it, because it is faster. Basically, the main point of this fight is to keep Clayton in stun at all times. Otherwise, he does moon jumps and he uses potions. If you miss the first set of staggers, it's alright. Just make sure you get that stagger going as quickly as you can. It'll just make the chameleon a little more aggro for a minute and probably not put him in a favorable position. If this happens, this is the one instance other than 
realigning yourself, that I would say it's okay to do single hit combos on him. Just moving him over to a corner that you guys can attack him in. Blizzard does decent damage as well, has good AoE. You need to spray him with something just to keep him stunned. Very important detail. Always fill your MP to maximum after the end of this fight. Make sure you have max MP, max orange bars on top of the MP. This is for bandits later when you're saving Aladdin. This is very important. But yeah, those are about all of the Clayton variations I could think to cover. Anything else, you'll just have to learn to adapt to whenever you start practicing this fight. There's a lot of different ways it can go, but those are the most common mistakes and mishaps that happen during this fight. So now we have Cure. Cure is one of the best abilities in the game. It's not quite as good as FM because we don't get Leaf Bracer for invincibility during healing in this game at all. It doesn't exist. But it's still very good. Probably the best ability in the game. So we're going to head up to Waterfall Cavern here. And any FM players watching, you guys can do your route if you'd like. Go ahead. I don't like doing it in this game. Similar to why I don't like doing animation skip. The camera is just extra weird in this version. But just follow my motions, climb up this vine, and hold down left and jump off the vine to land on that rock, roll into the cutscene zone. And we're going to be taken out to the world map here. So once we're on the world map, to get to Traverse Town, we're going to want to fly through Wonderland. This is important, we don't want to fly to Olympus because it's a longer gummy mission. Once we approach Wonderland here, press up and confirm select world. Do not disembark at Wonderland. Select Traverse Town next. And once we approach Traverse Town, we're going to select first district as our landing point. There's a Trinity right next to the door. So hold left and roll. Activate this Trinity and this should be one of the final Trinities that we get in the game for money. Go ahead and pick up all this money here. You're going to need it. Then we go to the mailbox and mail our postcard. If you have anywhere between 390 to 420 money, you're sitting pretty. You need 1250 money to afford the gummy pieces that you need to buy to make your gummy missions faster. Stead's going to talk a lot, so mash through all of his text. He's going to give us a book to deliver to Merlin, but afterwards we want to go to sell, stock, and go to the very bottom and sell everything we have. You don't really have to go to the bottom, but sometimes if you have enough money you can save an elixir or so, so I start from the bottom. Hop over to the save point, go to the world map again, and this time teleport from the accessory shop to the magician's study. Once we're here, we can deliver the book to Merlin. And we can also pick up Simba from Fairy Godmother. Simba can come in handy during the Saving Aladdin segment if you choose to use him. Otherwise, we don't use him really until like the very end of the game. But we get him by default from being here, so it doesn't lose any time by getting him. Smash through this text, and we're going to head out after this. Once outside, we're just going to jump across the rocks, just like we did before. Sometimes you may have to do some air swings to actually make the jumps. The rocks like to part quite quickly at times. But just head to the third district, and you're going to see Riku again for another long cutscene. After the cutscene, roll over to the third district lock and unlock it. You're going to need this later. Please do not forget that. Walk up into the Final Fantasy house and talk to Sid.
He's going to bring up a bunch of text about Maleficent. Going to get to watch a cutscene of Maleficent gaslighting Riku. Kind of cringe. But we're going to save our boy later. Don't worry about it. So just head out of the Final Fantasy house and just jump over the wall here and head towards the first district. Sometimes you can pick up some extra money here, so if you were short, you may not have to sell gummy pieces if you pick up enough. But I'm probably still going to be short some money, so I'll show you exactly why killing gummies in the gummy missions comes in handy. So we have to talk to Sid here, and we're going to have to sell a couple gummy parts. So now I have 1250. Now you press down once to fire a G, R1 twice to haste G, and buy both of them. We're going to immediately equip both of those once we get out of Traverse Town. If you forget, you're going to have a bad time. So enter the gummy garage right away and select the Excalibur to edit your gummy. Find the engine, press up on the D-pad to get to fire a G. Circle X to replace your old engine and then L2 and X to drop the haste G underneath it. So now we want to warp to Wonderland first. We do not want to go to the warp zone right next to Traverse Town. This just makes the gummy mission a bit faster. So now that we have a haste G underneath our gummy ship, we're able to boost by holding square. This makes the gummy missions a lot faster. We don't have to worry about collecting any more gummy parts because we're not going to be shopping anymore. So just make your way over to the warp zone and go ahead and enter it. So yeah, just hold boost the entire way through. And these orange heartless ships here, these on PS2 console cause a ton of lag. So you want to make sure you take these out as quickly as you can. I just like flick left and right in the center to take them out, especially here is where the lag would begin on console. Take out the ones on the left and the right side the best you can and it will eliminate the lag and make you save a little time. So now we're coming up on Agraba. Agraba is the start of the hardest part of the game, which I would consider to be mid-game from Agraba all the way up to Neverland. Agraba, most runs in the English version will not survive past this point. I would say about 70% of runs that are trying for a top time and die here. So if you have trouble here, do not worry, it is normal. So right when we land, we're gonna want to roll into Main Street and from Main Street, we're going to roll to the left into the alley to meet up with Jasmine. There's going to be a short little scene here where we meet up with her and just have to mash through a bit of text. Jafar is going to spawn his minions to come terrorize us, but we're just going to ignore that because we really don't care. We have enough stuff to deal with here, so roll to the left out into Main Street again and go straight to Aladdin's house. Just roll straight and jump up to this pole here. Inside Aladdin's house, we want to free the carpet by moving this little dresser he's stuck underneath. And we're going to roll to the save point and grab this Mega Elixir. Roll out into the plaza, do one roll and turn around. Open this chest for a Mega Aether. This is just to help you out later on in late game. And here is another difference between the English and Japanese version. Pretty much Agarba in general is far different in Japanese. So I'm gonna start with the English strategy for saving Aladdin. You can either use Blizzard or you can summon Simba in English only. So if you want to go with the blizzard strat, which is faster, you're going to want to roll to the right. Once they all pop out of the sand, immediately hit them all with blizzards to keep them in a group. Then find the next biggest group and do the same thing. Just blizzard them all in as big of a group as you can. That was very good, so I pretty much got all of them there. 
But a lot of the times you're going to have to kind of stitch together a good fight. You can alternatively use Simba, but you have to summon him immediately. You don't have time to mess around pulling up the summon menu because the bandits are really aggressive. I don't like this method of handling this fight because it is slower due to this long summon animation, but it's a very safe alternative. Just charge up a full charge, walk forward just a tiny bit and wait until they pop out of the sand and charge another full charge. The bandits in the Japanese version have a different spawn pattern. Only two poke out of the sand at once at the beginning until you move forward, then the rest pop out all over the place. Because of this, this fight is a little bit more difficult, and unfortunately we don't have the option to use Simba in JP because Simba is far too weak to take these bandits out in two charges. If you move forward just a slight bit, it makes it more consistent, so your best bet is to try to replicate the English version the best you can. After rolling to their right side, just try to get as many in a group as you can and blast them with blizzards. Once the next wave pops up, wait for a good grouping and blast the rest of them with blizzard. It can still be pretty quick, you just have to figure out how to get them grouped up consistently. So now we have freed our boy, the Chad, Aladdin. Aladdin is extremely powerful. He's like having a second Sora on the screen. Pretty much all of the additional party members in this game, like Tarzan, Aladdin, Beast, are extremely powerful. So we want to swap Aladdin in for Goofy. Goofy, at this point in the game, basically does nothing. He's not very strong. He doesn't need to gain EXP like he does in Final Mix. So do not put Goofy in your party over Aladdin. Aladdin is extremely powerful. He has Crescent, which is a great ability for getting crits. And he has Critical Plus, which increases his crit rate. His crits do a massive chunk of damage, and they help a ton with the Pot Centipede fight, the Jafar fight, and the Genie Jafar fight. So now that we're back in Agraba, you just want to hop up on top of this box over here and jump across the awnings into the alley. So from here, we're going to do a quick menu. We're going to equip the Jungle King Keyblade, take Aladdin's Ethers, and give them to Sora. We're going to take off some abilities for Aladdin. We're going to take off Sandstorm and Cheer in exchange for Critical Plus. And we're going to customize Aladdin to do regular attacks frequently. We roll forward and activate this lock by examining. It's way easier to do than FM. And we're going to jump across to the main street. Once again, jump across the awnings, but this time we're going to go to the bazaar. Now in the bazaar, if you get a red command menu, you ran into the black fungus mushrooms, just walk back out, get the mega ether and go back in. So optimally what you want to do here is move slightly to the right to spawn the bandit and start comboing him into the corner. Naturally, all of the enemies will chase you into the corner and you can take them all out very quickly. Now it doesn't always work like that. Sometimes you miss or Aladdin pushes them out of the way. All of the bandits will start hopping around the room. The green nocturnes will start floating into places you can't reach them at. But if this happens, either wait for the bandit to come back up top or hit them with magic. And then just hop your way over to the next lock to unlock up here. This unlocks the pathway to the pot centipede boss. If you didn't pick up the Mega Ether already, pick it up to your left there. Go into Aladdin's house. Before you drop down back to Main Street, touch the save point to refill you guys' HP and MP. Now you're going to want to jump to the awning in front of you and head into this room here. This should be the palace gates. Now here is the most cursed fight in this entire game next to Jafar. Pot Centipede and Jafar are the worst fights in this game. Bottom line, these fights are cursed. So I'm going to go over these pretty in-depth. There's a couple different ways these fights can go, but most of the time they're just going to go awfully. They're really just going to be bad. There's nothing you can do to make these fights like amazing. It's pure RNG. One wish left. 
You're making this really easy. So, <laughs> I'm going to start Sorry, off by boy. showing off the ideal fight. The fight that you're going to want to hope that you get most of the time you play this game. But there's a reason why I say runs do not last more than two hours. DJ taught me that, and he was not wrong. And now, I bid you all farewell. Attack! <laughs> so, let's start off with the perfect fight. So you want to move to its head, mash triangle for an Aladdin Crescent, and do an air combo. Blast it with blizzards, because every time you hit its head and tail with a blizzard together, it does double damage. So blizzard is a great tool for damage here. Try to get that double damage by hitting the head and the tail. Pots are going to be flying all over the pace, place being cringe. If he connects to only one pot and starts moving to the next room, you are golden. Start doing air combos and hitting both sides of his head and tail, because this does do double damage. If you get him to move like this twice in a row, this is the luckiest fight you have ever seen, and you will never have this happen again. So take advantage of this. This rarely happens. Just start going ham on the air combos between his head and his tail. Here's another way this fight can go. You can force the fight to go this way if you want. I don't recommend it, but if it happens, it happens. So start the fight off the same way every time. Triangle for Crescent from Aladdin. Empty your MP with double blizzard damage. And if you want, you can keep one blue MP like I do here, just to make sure I have MP to heal if anything happens. Now when you're doing combos on Pot Centipede, do them right between his eyes, directly in the center of his face. This is like a safe spot to where you won't get hit when you're doing ground combos here. Somehow all of the pots in the room got killed before he could go to the next area, so we're just stuck in this room until the fight ends. So just do regular ground combos between the eyes. Notice how the antenna are not hitting me. And if I hit the finisher, it does double damage as well. As long as I'm hitting both the head and the tail. That's why I'm doing this instead of blizzards, because I'm already here. But once you notice you're at full MP, get that double blizzard damage. Always heal if you're at mid to low HP, because you never know what could happen. It could spin into you real quick and end everything in an instant. So just make sure you're ground comboing him, healing when necessary, and going between his eyes for that safe spot. This fight's not too slow, but it sucks because you'll have to go through two loading screens, so you lose about 10 seconds. And now here's kind of the average way this fight goes. The fight starts off the same as normal, emptying the MP for the blizzards, getting the Aladdin damage. So now, you just want to keep doing your ground combos, try to refill your MP for some more blizzards. And I've taken out pretty much every pot in this room except for one, so I really don't want that pot to die. I'm not gonna hate it if it happens, but I'm also not going to go out of my way to avoid killing it. Pot Centipede is completely invincible right now. His tail is covering his head, so if this happens, you literally just have to stand here and wait for something to happen, for him to start moving. So his tail finally disconnected, and he decided to connect with this pot. So since there's only one pot he's connected to, you can do the quick air combos that do good damage between his head and his tail together. Go for blizzards when you have them. And as soon as he starts moving again, go ham. If you notice there's more than one pot connected to him, you have to time your air combos very specifically so that you don't clank with the two pots connected to him. When you start to notice that he is flinching a lot, but he's not breaking apart, this means he's very close to death. So just keep that in mind and go ham. I'm still going to heal here because you never know what's going to happen, but this should take him out. Since I'm in the final room here, I skip those two loading screens and save some extra time. Defeating Pot Centipede gives us the Ray of Light, which is a very powerful piece of equipment that we're going to use for a ton of segments in the run. We're not going to use it for a while, but we're going to use it quite a bit at the later half of mid-game and the rest of end-game. The next boss is the Cave of Wonders Tiger Head, and this boss is absolutely terrible in the English version. 
In the Japanese version, he's completely free. Lots of fights in mid-game are very different between English and Japanese, so this is where a lot of the differences really start to come into play. We're going to equip Combo Plus onto Sora in both versions. Having Combo Plus here gives us a little extra damage when splitting the damage between the two eyes for Tiger Head, and also just makes certain Heartless fights from here on out a little bit better. Since this is 30 FPS, we don't have to hyper speed roll up the side of the tiger's head. We kind of have a lot of time to get up here, but you want to get up there as quick as you can. Do two hits to change his AI and then start splitting damage. You do two hits, switch targets, two more hits. If you can deflect some of the lasers back into his eye like that, that's amazing. But I still have not found a consistent pattern similar to Final Mix for deflecting these lasers back to the tiger head. If anyone else can, you're going to be the GOAT, but I can't figure one out. So just sit here and split damage between the two eyes. Once he starts bobbing his head around like this, I just do blizzard on both eyes. Some of these blizzards aren't actually hitting because of the position I'm standing in, but try your best to split the damage between both eyes with the blizzards. You can heal your party members to prevent the bandits that the tiger head spits out from coming up here and terrorizing you. Instead, they'll focus on your party below. So I just healed Aladdin so that the bandits stop targeting me. Once my party members die, first thing that they come for is me. Donald is hanging on by a thread here. When there's only one eye left, I do two hits and a blizzard. So in the Japanese version, it's extra free. This boss will never spawn any Heartless. He will never spawn any of the Fat Bandits or the Bandits. Start the fight exactly the same and split the damage in the exact same way. For some reason, his AI is just not programmed to freak out on you. He will stay here doing these lasers the entire time. It doesn't matter. You can honestly focus on one eye at a time and he'll still have the same AI pattern. It's really nice. Keep splitting damage like normal. Now once there's one eye left, you can do two hits into a blizzard, or if you're feeling spicy, you could do three hits into a blizzard. Three hits is a little dangerous because you could put yourself in harm's way of the lasers, but if you want some extra damage, it works and it's pretty fast. But it's much easier, much safer than English. So now we enter Cave of Wonders and we equip Scan here. Swim over to this silent chamber in front of the chest and swim up the waterfall here. Roll down the staircase and jump over to the next hidden room. And we're just going to hit this pillar here. You can hit it with a fire, or if you're out of MP, you can hit it with a normal air hit. It doesn't really matter. Just break the pillar. Once the pillar is broken, we're going to head to Jafar now. So now we just get back up the stairs. I do jumps to get into the hall because it's a little bit quicker than rolling around in a circle. I roll forward and jump across here into the bottomless hall. This is a little bit sketchy of movement to a lot of people, but it's really safe. It's really easy. Just jump on top of that and roll through to the treasure room. Now in the treasure room, make sure you fully heal everyone here. Make sure everyone's fully healed up because this is very important. I said Pot Centipede was one of the worst fights in this game. Jafar is absolutely, without a doubt, the worst oh, fight in this game, period. Is this is the most cringe, horribly One inconsistent garbage fight in this game in every version, other than Japanese, so of course. Prove to our... In Japanese, it's free. 
A lot of the reason why DJ and a lot of other people like 1J is because Agraba isn't as difficult, but you're honestly just trading a difficult Agraba for a difficult endgame. I'd rather have a difficult mid game because if I'm sitting here for two hours and my run dies, I'm not going to be nearly as salty as if I sat there for four hours and my run died. So, that being said, Jafar in English, awful. Jafar in JP, free. I'm going to show you how to. I'm going to show you how to fight him in both versions, including Emulator. For the folks on Emulator. Since this is the one boss that does not function properly on Emulator. I don't know why, he just does not work. So I'll start with PS2 footage. You can actually one-cycle Jafar if Aladdin behaves and does enough damage with you here. So you want to roll to the right and bait out the laser, jump up with a Keyblade Sling, and knock him to the middle of the platform. You should be able to start going ham with combos, and you want to dodge this laser... Get as many hits with full combo finishers as you can. And whenever he starts to fly away, you have to stagger him twice. And you want to make sure that he's still in the middle of the platform. If he gets knocked off the platform, he will disappear. And I will show you exactly how that works in a moment. But if Aladdin goes in with you while you're mashing triangle, you can one cycle. However, the one cycle here is not common at all. So, I'm just going to show you guys some things to keep in mind to help this fight go more smoothly. If you end up missing the initial stagger here, you can get it off as long as you attack him before the laser phase begins. If he knocks you off with the laser, you can get back up. It's just going to end up with you lacking a lot of damage after DM skipping him. <clears throat> so, when going for the DM skip, you want to look out for Jafar's cape and his two hands becoming completely steady. Once you notice that, jump and stagger him as close to the center as you can. If you stagger him to the corner like I just did here, you risk falling off when comboing him and you're going to lack even more damage. This is going to make it even harder to one cycle. Now, if you knock Jafar off the platform, then he will just fly away. He's not going to stay there and do the ground pound. He's going to completely leave. And this is going to make the fight take even longer. This this happens even if you knock him the slightest bit off the platform. Basically, if Jafar's feet are hovering above the ground at all, he's going to teleport away. So because of this, you want to try to get him as close to center as possible when you do this fight. So I'm going to go over this example again. I fixed my stagger miss here by hitting him before the laser began. I do get knocked off, but that's okay. I just hop back up and continue fighting. So I'm looking out for both of his hands and his cape becoming still. Then I jump and stagger him to skip his DM and proc a ground pound here. During the ground pound, I just try to get as much damage in as I can. All the while I'm doing this, I'm mashing triangle to get my party members to attack with me. When you locked onto something and you mash triangle, it tells your party members, hey, attack this. They will literally go full aggro mode on whatever you're locked onto and attacking, as long as you're mashing triangles. So I mash it in between finishers. So once Jafar has landed on the left or right side here, I wait for his cape and hands to stop moving and then do one aerial hit to stagger him and start his laser phase again. This will give me more time to do as many air combos as it takes to finish him off. If you miss the stagger, or if he decides to fly away anyways, he's just going to fly off and do one of two things. He'll do a blizzard wall, where you can only really reach him with fires, and it's not really worth wasting your Genie Jafar MP to do that. Damage isn't good enough. And you won't be able to reach him with any physical attacks, or he will do this fire base attack, where he lights his staff on fire and pretty much charges towards you to swipe at you with it. You want to dodge that swipe, and then you could go for the same kind of staggers you would go for on the beginning platform, and it will proc the ground pound as well. At this point, you want to mash triangle to get your party to go ham with you so you can do as much damage as you can to finish the fight. And now, for the emulator boys, Jafar just does not work on emulator. He just doesn't, man. 
on any version. English, Japanese, he doesn't work. So you're going to have to make do with what you got. Just go ham and mash triangle with your boys. Try to get as much damage off as you can and try to keep him to the center the best you can. But as you can see, he just staggers a bunch and disappears. I don't know why this happens. Nobody I've talked to knows why this happens. It just does. So anyone playing on emulator, unfortunately, you can't make use of any of the strats I just showed off there. Even if you go for the stagger that I was talking about here, it won't work. So I just go for as many air combos as I can just to try to get him below that threshold of yellowish HP. Once he's below that threshold, he will likely do the fire staff attack I was talking of earlier. And once he does that, that's when you can finish the fight well. That, that's the best thing I can recommend for emulator runners. Just wait for this attack to come out right here when he lights his staff on fire and comes down to you, and that's gonna give you a chance to keep him steady to do a ton of damage. This is the best thing I could come up with. If anyone else playing on emulator had any better ideas, go for it, but this is all I could think of. Now, we're not quite finished talking about Jafar here because Jafar is actually much different in the Japanese version. However, he's actually free in this version. So you want to start the fight by centering your camera with L2, R2 since the camera starts at a really weird angle. Do the normal jump to stagger. If Aladdin almost knocks him off, you can jump to the side to knock him closer to the center. That goes for both versions, but in the Japanese version, all you have to do after getting the initial stagger is spam him with these air combos while mashing triangle to get your party to help out. He never flies away, he never does the ground pound. As long as you stagger him properly and keep him on the platform, he'll stay this way until the end of the fight. It's so incredibly free compared to the English version. Congratulations, you made it past the worst fight in the game. Now we're on to Genie Jafar. Genie Jafar himself is really not that bad. He's a lot more forgiving and easy to understand than Jafar 1 in general. This fight is different between the English and Japanese versions slightly, so I'll be showing both of those again, as well as some common issues that arise in this fight. So we'll start with English. At the start of your fight, you're going to want to center your camera with L2-R2 and just start doing short hop blizzards. When he swings at you, jump over it and keep firing blizzard until your MP is fully empty. Then, avoid this next swing and just do 1-2 jabs on Iago with air hits. The reason we do 1-2 hits here is because finishers often whiff. Be sure you're also mashing triangle to help get some extra damage from Aladdin and Donald. When Iago starts moving, if he gets out of your range at all, just start shooting Jafar with blizzards while he's throwing this meteor. And Iago should start moving towards the back of the room. You can do finishers at this point and keep mashing triangle for that extra damage. You'll hear Jafar pick up another boulder and start to throw it. You want to hear this before you jump down here and make sure your camera is facing this wall here. Your camera facing this after he throws the meteor is what makes him spawn here. So once he spawns here, empty your MP with blizzards on him, and you should be able to take him out. Now this was an example of an extremely good fight where I got tons of extra damage from Aladdin and Donald. This doesn't happen all the time. Honestly, this is kind of rare as well, but that is the best case example of how that fight would go. Okay, Jafar. So I'll show you how a more average fight goes. Everything starts off the same, you know, Blizzard's in place, empty MP, go after Iago. But sometimes your party members or you will actually hit his hand. When you do this, he's going to laser beam at the last place that you were standing. So I run out of the way of the lamp, bait that laser, and then start going in if this happens. Otherwise, he's going to laser right on top of the lamp here, and it's going to prevent you from getting any damage off on Iago. You can do finishers sometimes if Iago is up against the wall there. I just try to do one twos the best I can, especially when I get towards this back edge here because I don't want to fall off too early. 
So remember, jump off and face this wall here once you hear him pick up a boulder. And empty your MP as normal. Now this fight, I didn't get as much damage from Aladdin and Donald because they were getting destroyed early on by the lasers and whatnot. So when Iago lands, you just want to do your full ground combos. What I do is I delay my third hit and then do my finisher. The reason for this delay is that sometimes if you attack too early, the finisher will whiff. So that's a little bit more normal. That's kind of more standard practice of what you'll see when you attempt this fight. So moving on to the Japanese version here. A small difference is we have to actually move forward a tiny bit before we start our blizzard spams in the Japanese version. Standing still and firing off the blizzards does not work, and I'll show you what happens when you do that. If you try to use the same strat as English, Genie Jafar just kind of dips below the platform, and you're missing out on a ton of damage and wasting MP here. So what we do instead is jump forward just a tiny bit before we start our blizzard spam. Still avoid the swings as normal and spam until our MP's empty. Then we start going ham on Iago. So when we're doing our attacks on Iago, remember to be mashing triangle between each attack and dodging any swings that come your way. I found that Genie Jafar is a lot more aggro with these swings and laser beams in the Japanese version. So if he starts swinging a little too much, you can shoot some blizzards when you dodge like this to get a little extra damage out and make sure your damage output is still going consistent. So if Yago moves to the right and still heads to the back of the arena, just continue as normal. Try to get as many hits off as you can until you hear Jafar throw that big boulder or meteor. Empty your MP as normal here and then wait for Iago to land on the back. Unfortunately, my party members are dead here, so I'm not going to get any extra damage, and this is what I would consider to be a slow fight. Iago still has almost a full health bar, and my party members are dead, so no extra damage. But remember to delay that third attack so the finisher actually connects here. That's what happens usually if it doesn't. And then if you've charged up a bunch of MP from attacking Iago, just Hit Jafar with some blizzards until your MP is gone again. Then you can jump up and chase Iago down if you need to get the finish off this way. Pretty simple. Not much else to be said about Genie Jafar. Sometimes the fight takes a little while, but it shouldn't take you more than one cycle of him flying to the back and flying back to center. Worst case scenario. If it does, just work on your air combo hit timings, work on your blizzards, and make sure that you're not making Genie Jafar spawn somewhere other than that wall I told you to face. So after a cutscene, we're going to be thrown into the Cave Escape minigame. We're just going to want to force ourselves to die during this minigame by inching into the rocks and getting hit by them here. The reason we do this is because we don't actually have to complete this minigame to continue on with the story. If we die to the falling rocks here, we actually end the minigame early and move on to the next story cutscene. So we're going to want to take advantage of that. You want to make sure you're at about half HP by the time you get up to this entrance to the lava zone in the minigame. You want to take this hit from the right falling pillar and then flip into the left one and then these next two lava pillars should take you out. If you don't hit all of the rocks along the way, you can still death abuse. It just might take a slight bit longer. You might have to die in that next room versus the room that I died in there. Fun fact that doesn't matter a whole lot, this minigame is the same in the Japanese version, but the falling animation for the rocks is a lot weirder. As you can see, it's a lot more beta. This kind of makes the rocks a little deceptive when it comes to running into them. It makes it kind of hard to know, am I really going to run into this rock here because of the slow and weird falling animation here? But the procedure is literally exactly the same. Like the time to move your analog sticks, um, when to flip into the falling pillar. All of that is exactly the same. I just wanted to showcase a weird little quirk about the Japanese version here and how it's basically the same but kind of different at the same time. So with this, we have pretty much finished Agrabah. There's not much left to be done here. 
Aladdin's gonna give us the three wishes, and he's also gonna give us Genie as a summon. We don't ever use Genie, but we do use the hell out of that three wishes. So we're just gonna roll out into the storage room here and get the green trinity. This green trinity is gonna have a power-up. It's gonna be the first actual power-up we pick up in the run, and all power-ups we use in the run we use on Sora. So we're gonna go ahead and equip that three wishes and use that power up now. Once that's taken care of, we're gonna head straight over to Monstro. Smash through that text, and you wanna take the top path to Monstro here. So with Monstro, we just wanna make sure that we avoid the warp zone that appears here. If we take this warp zone, we're going to be taken all the way back over to Wonderland and Traverse Town. So we don't want to be going that far back. We just want to skip that and progress past that. So avoid this completely. Just hold right. Get out of the way of it. You should be good. So after you get swallowed by Monstro and watch the cutscenes here, just roll and jump into the water and keep swimming towards the boat. You'll get some more cutscenes, but after those, just hold forward and mash square to roll over this ledge here and enter chamber one. So chamber skip in PS2 actually saves more time than it does in FM due to the fact that PS2 has way slower loads. You won't really see this on emulator that badly because emulator loads quick, but I'm going to walk you through how to do this. Just make sure to pay attention to my input display. So once we've jumped up to the left platform and are facing the entrance to chamber two, hold forward to enter and during the loading zone, hold left and mash your attack button. This should allow you to land on this ledge that you entered from. Move slightly up to get in position and then hold upright and jump the next platform. Do not adjust your camera during this or it will not work. If you succeed, you should be able to jump over into the next chamber and you will skip two loading zones, saving about 10 to 15 seconds. So basically just keep entering the first doorway you see and you should get to the boss. But I'm going to also show you what this looks like in JP because JP, it's almost the same, just ever so slightly different, and the camera in this area is completely awful garbage. So instead of holding straight left, hold slightly up left to do your landing onto the platform here. You'll likely clank, you'd still want to move slightly up and then do the upright to jump to the next platform. From there, everything's the same, but I'm going to show you what happens if you miss the chamber skip and how to get to the boss without it. I'm going to show you in the Japanese version because everyone needs to see just how completely trash the camera is in this area. So after missing, follow my lead here and just go through the first portals you see on the ground level. And pay attention to just how cursed the camera is when you're going from place to place. It's not like this on English. It's perfectly fine on English. But just, just take a look at this. If you want to play Jay, this is what you're going to have to deal with, bro. You're going to have to deal with... Poverty Sora physics and poverty camera angles. So once we're done navigating through the chambers, we're about to get ready to fight Parasite Cage. Parasite Cage also has some differences between English and Japanese that are quite minor, but I will, of course, be showing both. So we'll start with English, as usual. No problem. Let's do it. So for Parasite Cage, if you don't know your low air combos and you didn't practice them like I told you to, you're fucked. There's literally nothing else to do in this fight except for time low air combos. As you can see, it completely stun locks him. If he decides to start swinging at you, you can attack him on the side of the rib cage here to avoid the swings. See how they whiff on me? You just have to be careful not to get flung in front of him. And that's it. It's literally just spam well-timed air combos. There is no backup. There is no here's what to do instead. That's it. So get good at your air combos, buddy. In Japanese, the only difference is that you have to bait out one swing at the start. After that, everything is the same. 
If you don't bait out that swing at the start of JP, you're not going to get the stun lock on him pretty much like at all. But same thing here, side of the rib cage when he starts swinging, if you do it low enough and you stick to the side, you won't get hit by the swings and you can keep him in the loop. Pretty easy. So just get good at those low air combos, man. I'm telling you, low air combos are the truth for this game. If you can do them, you can do anything. Practice, practice, practice. After jumping down the hole and following Riku, you want to pick up this high jump chest here. And then we have a small menu to do. So we're going to equip Berserk onto Sora, Cheer onto Goofy, and high jump. So from here, we're going to go pick up Dumbo. I'll explain why later. But for now, this blue trinity you can pick up optionally. It'll waste about 12 seconds, but it has an extra cottage and potion or two if you feel like you really need it. Pick up the water gleam, which allows us to get Dumbo and jump to this platform. And from here, I like to do the Zetris jump. Shout out to your boy. But we're going to roll up the side of this little bone here. And once we're at the top, jump up and grab the ledge to go into the throw. From inside the throat, we're just going to jump up to the shell above us and jump up to the stomach to fight Parasite Cage 2, who also has some differences between English and JP. Roll up to the center and start your air combo loop as soon as possible. It won't drop if you do it correctly until he opens his mouth. So when he opens his mouth here, attack the side of him. Do not attack that orb. My hits here will be registering to the orb, so he immediately gets up and starts swinging. You don't want this. If you attack from the side, you can do it much longer, and I'll show that in the Japanese example. But once again, the ribcage strat works as well. Just stick to the sides and you'll either clank or get whiffed entirely until your loop continues. Once the loop continues, just keep it up. Don't drop your combo. If you drop your combo, he's going to start swinging. Keep going. You have a decent window to get these air combos off. They don't have to be completely perfect, but just need to be fully timed, close together, and somewhat low to the ground. So in JP, you can actually start the fight off by casting fire to stun him. And then from this fire, you can roll up to the side and start doing your air combos. I usually roll up to the side here just to avoid the swings. But once I notice my air combo has started to loop him, I try to move a little bit further in by holding left. And I just keep up the loop here. So now I'll show you what I meant. If you attack from the side here, it won't register your hits to the orb in the center. This will keep him stunned for longer and make the fight a lot less annoying to deal with. I do one, two swings here to avoid getting hit by the wings if I'm a little apprehensive, if I'm in the right spot. But yeah, just keep it up. Keep up the low combos. If you open his mouth, attack from the side and don't let your hits register on the orb because he'll get up just like that. Goofy kind of pushed me in there. If you see him turn around, time your combos to clank or avoid him. And Blizzard does do okay damage if you need to get some hits in from far away. But that's really it. Quite simple fights in Monstro. So the reason I made you pick up Dumbo earlier is because you can miss Monstro in this game like you miss Hookship. Unlike Hookship, missing Monstro is beneficial to us. We save 45 seconds by missing him, but we lose 45 seconds by getting swallowed again. There's a 50% chance of this happening. It's a 50-50 at the middle of the run, whether or not you save or lose a minute. It kind of sucks, but it's part of the run, so oh well. Gotta deal with it. So I'll show you where to go if you do get swallowed again, and then I'll show you how to proceed if you don't get swallowed. Exit back to world map from Agrabah, and from here, warp to Monstro. If you don't warp, you're gonna have to do a very long gummy mission for no reason. But warping the monster will let us know right away, did we get swallowed or did we miss him? If we see the background fade out like this, unfortunately, we got swallowed. And we're going to have to lose 45 seconds. This time loss comes from this extremely long animation of getting swallowed into Monstro, as well as having to exit the world via save point and not just being able to continue the gummy mission straight to Halloween Town.
It'll take you to the center, somewhat close to where you started from the first time. You want to just roll up to the boat's staircase here and immediately exit the world by going to the save point. This is why we picked up Dumbo earlier, because if we had missed Monstro and had to do this, it would have lost a lot more time. So once you've exited Monstro, normal drive over to Halloween Town, and the gummy mission will start from where you were swallowed. Cringe. Now, if you actually miss Monstro, I'll show you what that looks like. You'll warp to Monstro like normal, but this time instead of being swallowed, Goofy's gonna talk some yak. You want Goofy to talk this yak, because if he does, then you just save 45 seconds and you get to finish off the gummy mission from where Monstro would have swallowed you. So you save all that time on getting swallowed, having to go to the save point and exit, and having to restart the gummy mission. This is exclusive to this version of the game. Final Mix patched this issue out, probably because people got tired of trying to revisit Monstro to get collectibles and missing him over and over again like I did in my JJ Expert run. Now we've made it to Halloween Town. This world is pretty fucking hard, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. But don't worry, we got this, we'll make it through. The Heartless fights and the Oogie fights just suck, but we'll get to those when we get to them. Master this text and roll up to the gate to enter Guillotine Square. There will be a short cutscene. Afterwards, just roll up to the stairs and jump at the highest point of the stair. Grab this ledge and pick up the power up. We'll use this later. But for now, roll off and start the next cutscene this way. Then roll yourself back up to the lab entryway and then into the lab. So, after the first half of the cutscene, there's actually a prompt to mash just a little bit. So, don't take a break during this cutscene until at least after you've mashed this. Second half of the cutscene will play, and you want to select Donald and Goofy, your default party here. So now we have a big menu. We're going to go to items, stock, and use the power-up for Sora. Take all of Jack's items to stock. Make sure Goofy has no potions. If he does, take them. Take out ethers for Sora. Equip Ray of Light over Brave Warrior. Remove... Jack's first five abilities, the Donald's advanced magic to occasionally, and then copy this menu for Goofy. This is very important because it basically determines how many MP gifts you get throughout the run. An MP gift is like our main strategy once we get it after this world. So copy this, and for Jack, I just put it all occasional because I don't want him hitting Oogie. Donald's advanced magic is occasional for a Maleficent fight later. After the cutscene, walk back out to the square, and we're going to be heading to the graveyard to get Sally. So go ahead and roll around this corner and jump up to the graveyard entrance. And here we're going to have a quick heartless fight. We're going to want to center our camera and our character and just blast some blizzards until these heartless have died. Make sure we stay centered so that we can hit both of these search ghosts with blizzard. We're going to have to back up a bit to respawn these white knights. Hit them with blizzard and ether once you're empty. Finish off with a few blizzards. So this is going to be another cutscene of us finding Sally. After that, just roll back towards the square. Hey, blow up. Blow. All right, so go ahead and deliver the item you got from Sally to the doctor. This world's going to make you do a lot of backtracking back and forth between the graveyard and the lab. Just get used to that. We're going to be handing him the item. He's going to tell us to go pick up another item from the mayor to complete the heart. So we're going to retrace our steps once again back to the graveyard. This time we're going to have a different heartless fight to take care of that's going to involve some difficult platforming. Defeat the left one with physical attacks to charge some MP, and then take the rest of the White Knights out with fires. Use an ether to refill when you're empty. Take them out with fire. 
want to land on these two platforms and not fall off to spawn Heartless. Roll forward twice and hold forward as well to examine the coffin and hop in. It requires some precise platforming, but you'll get the hang of it. But this minigame makes us keep track of the tombstones the ghost came out of in that specific order. I just stand in front of the tombstone that releases a ghost first, and then I keep track of the other two. Don't mess up like I did, or else you'll have to repeat the minigame. So just interact with the tombstones in the order the ghosts appear, and it will break this pumpkin head in the corner. A pumpkin head has a chest with the item we need in it, so we'll go ahead and grab that. And head out. Going to roll up to the platform and and blast it with a fire and make our way back to the lab. You're going to deliver this item to the doctor as well, but this time he's going to get bullied by absolute shitter creatures, Lock, Shock, and Barrel. So we're going to just refill our MP, make sure it's maxed out. You're short on MP, just ether. And we're going to head back to the graveyard to beat the shit out of the kids. This time after the cutscene, just ignore all the Heartless and activate the platform with the fire. But notice how if you don't make it to the top of the platform, and the platform lowers when you jump on it, you don't enter the loading zone. For this wave of Heartless, just try to lock on to the gargoyle in the back, and just blast away the blizzards. Don't do what I did and stand too close to this pumpkin, or else your damage will get blocked. Just make sure to take out these Heartless. I like to try to end this room with at least 3 MP. But if you don't, you can pick up a couple bubbles and then just move on like I did here. There are some ways to get a little extra MP later, which I'll show off. Go ahead and examine that to cross the little bridge here. And head through the gates to finally go somewhere other than the graveyard and the lab. But we're going to Oogie Manor. So Oogie Manor also has some precise platforming. We're going to do what's called the Community Climb. So I'll try to break it down here. It is a little difficult, especially for beginners. So just center your camera and roll up to the center of the stairway here. Once you're next to this white knight, jump onto the railing. So from here, make sure your next jump is at the exact edge of the railing. If you jump a little too early here, you're going to slide off and fall all the way to the bottom and lose a ton of time. Oh my fuck. So jump at the very edge of the railing. Land on the side of the roof here and jump up top. Jump over to this little scaffolding and then follow my jumps from here. These jumps are a little bit easier. They don't really need as much explanation. And then from here, you want to move up this roof slightly to give yourself a little bit more height and then jump up and grab the ledge here. So now, like I said earlier, if you need some more extra MP before LSB, hit a combo on that gargoyle and it should refill at least a bar. Now it is time to fight the creatures. La creaturas. Lock on immediately. Jump to the doorway to center yourself with the room and unload your MP bar with blizzards, bruh. Once you're out of MP, pop an Aether and keep going ham. Try to get as many in your blizzards as you can. You want to do as much damage to all three of them as you can so you can end this fight as quickly as possible. I take out Shock or Barrel first because they are the most annoying. They spin around everywhere and come after you quite quickly. Barrel is easily the worst. But take those two out first and then focus on Lock. This fight is completely awful. That was a pretty good fight, but usually it does not go that well, like, at all. Usually, you're just getting bodied and knocked around. There's not much of a backup strat or safety strat here. Just ground combo them if your blizzards don't kill them enough, and heal yourself when you get low. Smack this switch frame one. If you forget, you're gonna be locked out of the Oogie fight, and you're losing at least a minute minimum. Swap Ray of Light out for Brave Warrior or White Fang and remove Donald from the party in favor of Jack. The reason for these things is because we need more strength to fight Oogie, and we're going to be utilizing that Berserk ability that we had. Berserk does critical damage and critical health, so pretty much all of your hits will equal crit damage when your health is in critical status. 
This strategy makes this fight one of the most butt-clenching, difficult fights in the run. So I'll show you how it's done. At the start, hitting the gargoyles with Blizzard will make them fly down to you. I missed one, but he still comes down. Try to take two hits from Oogie's dice, or if you take a hit from a Heartless, it's fine too. Make sure your HP matches mine, and take out both gargoyles with physicals and or Blizzard. So once that's taken care of, trap Oogie without your party members being on the panel with you. Oogie takes 10 hits before he knocks you down. So take a hit from him to get put into Berserk status and do as many full combos with finishers as you can. When he knocks you down, if you hit underneath his body, it can do an extra hit if you're accurate. I throw a Blizzard on the way down. And you can deflect these dice with a single ground hit with good timing. So the middle platform, you can actually reach Oogie as long as you Toji hop here. But make sure you do one round of combos on Oogie without Berserk. This makes it to where he stays within the range to throw some more dice at you. So he's going to knock you down. Just make sure his HP doesn't go below the outer edge of the lock-on symbol. We'll throw some more dice and go for another deflect. From here, try to trap him again without your party members and get Berserk on this final round. A visual cue I go by to know if my health is okay enough to have a Berserk is if my HP goes below this largest spike on Sora's hair in the HUD, I'm going to die. But as long as it's slightly above that spike, I should be within Berserk range. Once you're in Berserk range, just finish Oogie off with some full air combos. So, something else can happen in this fight that you need to be aware of. When you're going to press the button to trap Oogie, he can get launched over the grates if you press the button while he's in between them. So make sure you press it when he's in the middle. Now the Japanese version is slightly different. Still try to hit both gargoyles with Blizzard here to make them come down to you. I actually hit them here. And if you can, take two hits for Berserk damage, but at least take one if you can't take two. I attack these gargoyles with only physicals and fire because you need to save your MP. Fire costs half MP and JP, so it's not that bad. But trap Oogie like normal. And since I didn't take two hits from the dice or anything, I'm going to take two hits from him. And it should put me in Berserk just fine. Do full air combos. And on the last hit, especially if he's raised up like this, if you back up and do a low air swing, it'll actually deal damage when he's invincible. So you can get 11 hits off. Always shoot him with blizzards on your way down because you need that extra damage to finish off the fight. I heal out of Berserk and then go for the deflect. You can jump and go for it. If you miss it, I recommend just going for air hits like I did just there. And now this fight's a lot easier since we only do two berserks on him and we're done. So just take berserk again after that dice reflect and this should be the fight. Once you do your full combos and he knocks you off, hit that extra hit and mash blizzard on the ground. When you mash blizzard, and get knocked off, you can actually shoot out two at once. You can do that in English too, but it's more useful here because Blizzard actually does a lot more damage and you need it to finish the fight. So that's Oogie. There's not really much to show in terms of backup strats. If you miss the dice reflect and he does the merry-go-round sides or he does buzzsaw or spawns heartless, they're pretty easy to react to. Just make sure you're staying within Berserk range. I'm going to put it on screen again. Just make sure your HP is near that spike, but not below it, and you'll be good to go for Berserk. So now we have the fucking horrific fight. I hate this fight with my whole entire being, buddy. Anyone who watched me record footage for this tutorial knows how cursed this fight is. This is Oogie Manor. It seems like it's all fun and games until you remember that the camera is kind of cucked in this game and you don't pop the pimples in like four air hits. So let's just get into it. Roll off and buffer stop right away. And you want to platform up to this first little pimple here. And in the English version, you just want to do full air combos on these things. It takes three full air combos to kill one pimple. Pretty cringe. Jump around over to that platform and up top and keep firing out the air combos. I'm going to show you the route that I take. I don't do the final mix route. I jump up on this roof and then start from the top and work my way down. 
So just follow my movements here and take out the pimples. So this next pimple here is actually really shitty because two gargoyles spawn next to it and it actually makes the game lag. So because of the lag and it being hard to control, I kind of just blast it with a lot of blizzards to try to maybe get the gargoyles out of the way and then kill it. This one right here, I use stop if there's any gargoyles nearby. I knocked them away in time, so it didn't really matter there. Roll down to the next, take it out with your combos. Now you want to jump down in between the crack here to get to the next one. And be careful not to knock yourself off like I did there. I usually just do ground combos because of how dangerous it can be to air combo down here. And then you can interrupt your ground combos with fire if you want. That looked easy, but you guys have no idea how many hours it took me of grinding that segment to make it look even remotely decent. Once again, not really any backups there. Uh, you just go ham and don't get hit. Everything I told you applies. Just be careful and make sure you're healing. Do not let yourself be here with low HP because fireballs, gargoyles, all sorts of shit will fuck with you. So stay healed up and go ham. And JP, you still want to buff or stop at the start, but this time instead of doing three air combos on the pimples, we can do two blizzards and a full air combo, or we can just do two full air combos, because we're still a lot stronger here in mid-game. So make sure you platform up top just like normal. Two blizzards, full air combo, we'll take it out. This time I'll show you guys what happens when we take the FM route, so I'll just go ahead and do it like normal. Just with the blizzards involved. FM route is doable, it's just a little bit sus because of the frame rate and the enemy AI being annoying. You can stop these two gargoyles so they don't terrorize you. Now if you're going to attack this pimple, make sure you get on the other side of it so that fire cage doesn't swing and hit you and knock you off. This should be taken out pretty decently by two air combos, but gargoyles start getting in the way and things start getting sus, so just make sure you're aware of that. Yeah, just finish the fight. Not too bad. I don't like doing this FM route. Honestly, the gargoyles just get really sus, but do whichever you like. FM route is probably faster by a decent amount. Uh, I just don't like it. And in a five hour run, I don't care to save seconds like that. We're not that optimized just yet, but maybe when the FM boys come over, we might have to, so who knows. So GG's, that's Halloween Town. Never lands up next, and just like the rest of mid-game, it's a pretty damn tough world. But before we head over there, we got a small menu to do. Jack's gonna give us a new Keyblade. He's gonna give us the Pumpkin Head. This Keyblade's a piece of shit, and it whips all the time, but it's a lot stronger than the Three Wishes. So, we're gonna want to equip that Pumpkin Head. And then, in terms of abilities, you can put on Air Combo Plus, and if you want, you can put on Counter Attack. Lately, I haven't been using it because it doesn't really come in handy that much. But just head over to the square and then back to the one save point that's in this world to teleport out to Neverland. Alright, so once we head out, just go straight up and fly to Neverland. So I'll briefly explain how landing at Neverland works for those who aren't aware. To land at Neverland, you need to meet up with a hook ship on the gummy mission, similar to how you meet up with Monstro and get swallowed. Uh, the gummy mission gets interrupted and then you land on hook ship. So to know that you've landed at hook ship, these two rings here, if you don't end up flying through them and they disappear, then hook ship will appear and kind of like Monstro, it'll play a little animation with some text and fly in and you'll be able to land and actually start the world. But, alternatively, you can miss hookship, kind of like Monstro earlier. There's a much lower chance to miss hookship than there is to miss Monstro. There's like a 30% chance or something like that. So it's not nearly as bad, but I'll show what that looks like as well. If you miss hookship, the two little rings that I was speaking about earlier will not disappear, and you'll just fly right through them. So if you end up flying through these rings right here, just finish off the gummy mission. Don't death abuse or anything like that. You physically can't quit out of gummy missions in this game. So you can't pause and quit or anything. 
just finish off the gummy mission because you're gonna arrive at Atlantica within seconds pretty much so it's not too bad to miss it you still lose like 40 seconds so it does suck but it's a lot better to do it this way than to die and then restart the gummy mission from the Halloween town side so just try to go fly back to Neverland and from this side, it doesn't take nearly as long to get Hookship to appear if it wants to appear. You can still miss it. You can miss it twice. If you miss it more than once, take damage on those cubes on the roof and then die to exit the gummy mission. But if these cubes disappear, you're good to go. And you have made it to Neverland. So once we actually make it to Neverland, we're going to have a cutscene where we meet up with Peter Pan. After it's over with, just select your default party and walk through the door here. Jump up to this platform and then either ledge hang or toji hop to the next area. Cast a spell as you fall down this hole so you don't grab the ledge. And roll up to the ladder and hit the loading zone with your keyblade. After another cutscene, climb up to this area and jump through the hole on the right side. You gotta activate this green trinity here to pull down the ladder, and then we'll be fighting Anti-Sora. Anti-Sora is pretty difficult. This is a hard fight to do fast, and the arena is very small and very annoying. We're gonna wanna keep Anti-Sora in a loop for as long as we can, but I'll try to show you some ways to deal with him if the loop drops, but I'll show you how to start it first. So to start the loop, you hit him three times with empty hits, then do a full combo. Try to keep him cornered if you can. Then do one, two, full combo. And then from here, if your party members line up like this to get hit by him, that's perfect. Let them take damage, they need to die. One, one, two, three, four is how you continue the loop, but eventually it'll drop. That's fine. Just avoid his attacks here, and then go ahead and start it up again. Three empty hits, full combo. He'll retaliate. You avoid the retaliation. One, two, one, two, three, four. So now the loop has started again. He's at low enough HP to where you can continue the loop until he dies. You can tell because once he hits about a full green bar, his loop won't break. You'll keep him in the loop until he dies. So all you do to keep him in that loop is after his retaliation finisher swing, you just have to hit him with a single hit to keep him stunned and do a full combo. I'll try to slow it down to show you the window of time you have to actually hit him with this. You want to catch him while he's in idle stance. There's a very small window of time where after his finisher, he will be back in the idle stance that Sora is in when standing still and not attacking. As long as you time that air hit to hit him during this idle stance, you can keep the loop up. Since keeping this loop is very difficult, I'll show you what to do when you drop the loop. If you drop the loop and he breaks out into shadow clones, you can use blizzards and keep spamming them to close the gap until you've caught up with him. Then you can begin the loop again. Each blizzard basically acts as one attack's worth of hit stun. So this means you can use blizzard alone to make him respawn and start the loop again. I recommend killing all the shadow clones so they don't interfere with the loop. Now he could use the shadow clone jutsu or he could use the shoryuken. If he uses the shoryuken, Clank against the wall and you're completely invincible during the clank animation. You can then use that chance to start the loop back up again. Once again, it's a good thing if your party members get hit. You want these fucking barn animals to die, and I'll show you why. to customize him to shut the fuck up self-explanatory enough said 
So with all this knowledge in mind, that's really it. There's not much else to the fight that I can go over. Just try your best to get a perfect loop and keep him in the loop as long as you can. And good luck. So we have a menu after anti-Sora. Equip Raven's Claw on Sora. Equip Donald's bottom three abilities. Press L1 to get to the bottom of Goofy's and equip second wind and MP gift. R1 twice and remove Hummingbird and Timeout for Peter Pan. And you want to replace Fire with Stop. We're going to need this for Hook. We'll have a shortcut scene with Peter Pan and Wendy. And touch this save to refill your MP if it's low. Then we're going to roll back to where we fought Anti-Sora to get out to the ship's deck and fight Hook. You can jump off the ladder a little early, kind of like in Deep Jungle to save some frames there. But once we're on the deck, we're going to have a Heartless fight. So when it asks you to select your party, you have a couple options here. If you want more MP, pick Goofy. Peter Pan will throw ethers at you and Goofy. Goofy will throw MP gifts at you. MP gifts act as a full ether, pretty much. They give you three MP for the cost of one of Goofy's. So you can choose Goofy and Peter Pan or Donald and Peter Pan. If you're afraid of dying... Choose Donald and Peter Pan. Peter Pan's ethers will be enough. Personally, I choose Goofy and Peter. Peter does good damage to the Heartless here, and he helps out slightly when fighting Hook, so... I go with Goofy and Peter Pan, but either one is fine. Just make sure Pete's with you. So, Blizzard these boys to death. You want to get as many in your Blizzards as you can. Try to group them up and just spam these dudes with Blizzards. Blizzards are really good here. When you're out of MP, you'll get thrown some by one of your boys. Just give it some time. And once you get it back, just use some more blizzards. Once you've taken care of all of these Heartless here, do aerial attacks on these flying Heartless. Try not to glide unless you absolutely have to. Blizzard will stop them in place. So if you notice that there's two flying next to each other and you want to group them up like this, just use a blizzard. It'll stop them. So your party members will focus on their own fights until you lock on and press triangle to tell them to go somewhere. So keep that in mind. After defeating them, make sure you stop this ship and hit it with two gravities. Mash triangle for the boys to help and kill the ship. The ship is really annoying if you don't take care of it early. Then just finish off the remaining two gliders and you're good to go. After this is Hook. He'll probably take a while to explain as well because he's another one of those really hard mid-game bosses. He does have differences between the English and Japanese version. Stop doesn't last very long between both versions, but it's even worse in Japanese, so it kind of changes the fight up a little bit. But as usual, we'll start with English. So you want to roll over to the boxes here, jump up top, and then wait for Hook to jump back. Avoid any attacks and stop him. I do three hits and then a full four hit combo, followed by another stop. You have to be aware of when he is in the angry state because you can't stop him during that. As long as he's not, you can land a stop. But this state right here, he cannot be stopped during this. He's gonna do three DM retaliatory slashes. Just clank these three and then stop him. If the Heartless ship is trolling you, you're just going to have to deal with it. If Hook gets knocked away, he can be stopped as well. He only can't be stopped in the angry state. See how that doesn't work there. Just clank the attacks. And stop him after he's done slashing about. Blizzards are an okay option for extra damage if he's in the slashing state and you want to just finish him off or maybe just get extra damage. But be aware that is using MP that you could be using for stop. So I only really recommend it in situations like this where it's just to end the fight. So I was getting destroyed by the Heartless ship earlier. If these fireballs manage to hit Hook, it makes the fight really, really bad. Hook doesn't like fire. He's going to run around and he has an active hitbox during this. If he ends up falling off of the bow, it takes him so long to get back on here. So you can blizzard him to put out the fire or just try your hardest not to let that affect you. Sometimes the Heartless ship will get in the way and just completely ruin your combos and everything. It's really annoying. There's not much you can do. All you can really do is just try to adapt the best you can. 
So in JP, Hook is pretty much the same strat, but as you can see, Stop barely lasts, like at all. It lasts almost no time. You can still do the same strat, but your air combos have to be extremely tight and really close to the ground. If they're not, then this strat doesn't really work as well, and you're just going to get clanked and terrorized the entire time. But the overall strat is the same. Clank when he's in anger state. Stop him after. Do very close to the ground. One, two, three. Then full combos. Make sure you're doing good stops. You're not wasting any MP here. And yeah, that's basically it. It's the same fight, but since stop is a little shittier, it makes things way more sketchy. So that's Hook. There's not really any backup strats beyond what I showed you there. You know, you're just trying to get stops off and keep him locked down the best you can while you do combos on him. If any of those things with the Heartless ship happen, just try your best to adapt and keep him locked down and keep dealing damage as quickly as you can. Once we get sent to the clock tower after a couple cutscenes, we're just going to smack the hands on the clock tower to reveal the keyhole. Steal the keyhole and finish off Neverland. So we just received the fairy harp and we got ours from the hook fight. So let's go ahead and equip those things. So we're going to put fairy harp on Sora. We're going to give Goofy the ray of light. And then we're going to equip ours Arcanum and Glide as well. Then we can head out. We've got a pit stop to make here at Traverse Town. We gotta take out opposite armor to get arrow, seal the keyhole, and install a new gummy piece into our gummy ship. We're also gonna pick up Dumbo while we're here. So first we're gonna pick up Dumbo, so make sure we land in the magician study. From here, just walk up to Fairy Godmother and turn in the summon stone that we got at Monstro. He's going to be able to turn the Summit Stone into Dumbo for us, and we're going to need Dumbo for Hollow Bastion so we can do a couple skips to save some time. So now that we've got Dumbo, we also need to pick up a power-up outside of Merlin's house. So roll to the right over here near this yellow trinity where these boxes are, and we're not going to activate the trinity. We're just going to platform up here and grab the chest. Use that power-up right away because we need that extra strength for opposite armor. In the Japanese version, you do not need this power-up. Do not grab that in JP. You're already strong enough. You don't need it. But glide over the rocks and head to the second district. Second district is where we will fight opposite armor. So we just take this route here and go through the doors to the second district in the alleyway. So I just roll kind of towards the center. A large body's gonna spawn here, but I like the enemies to spawn there so that they actually despawn by the time I get over to this area here. Usually if I go to the left or right, try to avoid the large body, there's an error with them spawning and it makes this fight up here difficult. But just ours all of these little shitters up here, take care of them all, and then activate the red trinity here. Now I'm going to ring this bell four times. I healed there because I was at two MP out of four. The way MP gift works is Goofy will always throw you MP when you have one MP remaining. He won't give it to you if you have two. We need to use a lot of R's in this upcoming fight. So I need my MP to be at three or one so that once I use R's after an MP gift, I'll be back down to 1 MP and I can keep getting a steady supply of MP to take out the opposite armor. Roll off of the top of the building here and roll up to the keyhole. This will start the fight with guard armor again, or so we think. It's actually uh, just some jibatory. Just want to knock out one of his arms since it has the lowest HP. Once you knock it out, make sure you have 3 MP here. 
I heal again to make sure I'm at three. So that whenever I actually start the opposite armor fight and I get my MP from Goofy, it's not going to mess up how many MP gifts I get. Guard armor is going to transform into opposite armor now. For opposite armor, there are a few different ways you can open this fight. I'll show both. I prefer to do it with an aerial clank. You don't have guard in this game, so you're not going to be able to guard this at all. For the ground clank, you want to wait a split second after. He covers his eyes with his helmet, and then you want to attack. For the aerial clank, you want to wait until you notice the target on his head disappear, jump, and then attack at the peak of your jump. Now, whichever way you decided to clank, the following steps are the same. R's that one foot there. Try to get some damage on the hands before he makes you clank again. Break the other foot, and then finish off the hands. After you break the hands, you just finish off the main body. With these visual cues for the clanks, I find the boss pretty easy, but I'll show you guys what to do if the clanks are missed at all. So, if you miss the initial clank, he'll start to pull his body back and swing it. You can clank again and hit him with R's to deal a little bit of damage to everything. Then you get a second chance at clanking. So, as you would before, let's try to take out the feet first to have the most health. If you miss a second clank, he's going to change up his AI pattern a bit here, and he's going to start flying around, dismembering himself, and being sus. He gets a lot of iframes during that, as you can see, so it just slows down the fight a lot overall. So you really want to practice getting these clanks down so you don't have to deal with this shit. I use Blizzard sometimes to try to pop a limb if I can't figure out where the fuck it is, or if it's flying around too much. But he had iframes. He has a ton of iframes normally, if you mess up the clanks. But that's really it. This fight's pretty easy, just make sure you practice your clanks, practice timing the clanks, using the visual cues, and you'll be good. Head back to the first district to talk to Sid, because we still gotta install that gummy piece. After we talk to him, there's going to be a little bit of text to mash through, and then a pretty long cutscene. This is a good place to take a break if you need to. Once Sid wobbles his way back into the frame, mash through the text, and just head back to the world map through the accessory shop. So we have to actually warp to Neverland first, so that we're close enough to fly to Hollow Bastion. So just make sure you take this little top route up here to get over here a little quicker. Warp to Neverland. And then normal drive to Hollow Bastion. I've seen people die on this gummy mission before, so I'm just going to show you guys a little hack here. At this part in specific of the gummy mission, if you want to stay alive, just move to the far upright to where you can't move anymore. And as long as you're here, you shouldn't be touched by anything. Those gigantic heartless ships that usually fly through and clip you for half or more of your HP, they can't touch you up here. Literally nothing can touch you if you're up here just shooting the gun. So stay up here, boost, shoot, and then once you're close to the actual entrance of Hollow Bastion, you can just head out and head to the world. So we've made it to Hollow Bastion. This is where the game really starts to get a lot different between English and Japanese, I guess, towards endgame. Uh, things were a little bit more rushed in the Japanese version, so there's a lot of differences. So prepare for us to go over a lot of comparisons regarding that. But for now, we just have some platforming to do at the start. Now we've made it to Hollow Bastion. The game starts to get a lot different between English and Japanese here, so there's going to be a lot of comparisons back and forth. But our main goal at first is to platform up here and meet with Riku. Make sure you don't platform all the way up and just roll into the cutscene zone down here. After the cutscene with Riku and Beast, he's going to take our Keyblade and leave us alone with Beast. So just go ahead and confirm that. And we want to take Beast's ethers. 
because we'll need those a little bit later. Give them to Sora. And make sure a Mega Aether is the top item. This is for a boss fight later as well. So I remove Ferocious Lunge, Berserk, and add Critical Plus to Beast. And then I also customize myself with Gravity over Blizzard. But now that that's taken care of, just hop up on top of these platforms here. If you missed that one, it's fine. You can jump up to the side here. Just make sure you make your way up to the castle gates. Roll right off behind you. And we're going to go to the bubble realm. So I center my camera here and then just roll into this first bubble on the bottom. Alright, get Beast to open this door by accessing the call command on the bottom there, and roll into the first bubble you see beyond the door. Now we're going to do the switch puzzle here. So I'm not really going to explain verbally what I'm doing, it's probably just best to watch and follow the order that I select the switches in, so I'll just leave you to watch that. Alright, once all the switches have been pressed, hop through this bubble, and we're going to activate the switch to open the main castle gate. Activate this switch to hop up top with Beast, and we have to defeat one defender that's gatekeeping us from pressing the switch here. So what you do to beat him is, you want to cast two gravities, and then mash triangle to have Beast finish him off. It will pretty much always go that way, as long as you land those gravities. So we got the main door open, and we're just going to head back and do the puzzle in reverse order. So once again, I'm just going to leave you to watch how it's done versus walking you through it verbally. It's probably easier that way. Okay, I touched the save there so that I have full MP for the Riku fight coming up here. Once we exit this bubble, we're going to despawn these Dark Balls because they're way too annoying to fight. So follow my lead and roll into this little corner here. You want to roll into this corner until you see Beast appear next to you. Once he appears next to you, they're all gone. Salmon the lift. Make your way up to the main castle gates to fight Riku. Since we're approaching Hollow Bastion's first real boss, I should preface this by saying most of the fights from here on out will be a lot different in the Japanese version. So be expecting version comparisons coming up. But we'll start with the English version of Riku. This fight is kind of difficult. Um, just because Riku doesn't like to stay stunned. So we're going to take advantage of MP Gift and R's here. Wait for him to ground pound and then go for the R's. Pretty much all you're doing is baiting out that ground slam attack and then hitting him with R's as soon as he does it. Be watching your and Goofy's MP. When Goofy's out of MP and so are you, you want to throw a Mega Aether. So I get ready to do that now and I toss the Mega Aether to refill us both. Then we go ahead and continue to R's every time Riku hits that ground pound attack. If he gets clanked, you can go for an R's as well. Basically, just rinse and repeat with this. That was a pretty good fight. Now, the Japanese version of Riku is way easier because he just wasn't completely programmed. He takes ridiculous stun from pretty much everything. 
So I like to walk up and clank him there and just keep him in this R's loop the best I can. Just spam him with R's. Try to corner him if possible. And just unleash as many bashes with your R's as you can. That'll connect. Anytime you hit a bash on Riku, he'll actually stagger again and just get stuck in a loop. So it's really easy for JV. So you'll get your boys back after this fight. So make sure you select the boys as your party members. You're going to want to enter the library. And we got a puzzle to do so that we can get up to the lift shop and get to Maleficent. So grab this book in the corner here. Throw it into the bookshelf with the rest of the books. And roll up the side of the stairway here. It's a little faster to just jump over than to roll all the way around like that. And if you roll into the book, you can pick it up without having to jump off of the table. Take that book and put this one in place of it. And that's really it for the library puzzle. It's quite simple. Just go ahead and smack this button on the wall and the door will be open for you. Now we got another puzzle to do the entrance hall to get the heartless door pieces so fire these two candles smack these two pots fire the next two candles here push this off with the red trinity and when I'm firing these candles all I'm really doing is going into the magic menu fire L2 to switch targets, and then doing it again, basically. All I'm doing. Push this into its place here. This thing is kind of hard to push sometimes, so if it's giving you trouble, just kind of move your camera a little bit. See if that helps. Then here's the last two candles you gotta light here. So now we're gonna grab these pieces. First grab the piece up top by gliding over to it. Jump off to the left here and grab the piece in the middle piece in the fountain, and then if you want to be swag, slide down and grab this chest here. That's all of the Heartless Door pieces, but there is one thing we need before we go. There's a power-up hidden in this room. Grab this ledge up here and open this chest for that power-up. You definitely need this in both versions, so go ahead and use it as soon as you get it, because you're going to need it for the following boss fights. Then go ahead and put all of the pieces into the door. Now we can go to the lift shop. Go through the only doorway in this area. And it should take us back outside the castle gates. So just roll up these stairs here, jump over to this lower platform, and then fly over to the left side here. We're going to be picking up a Holy G. It's a gummy piece that helps us go a little bit faster for the final gummy missions. If there's a gargoyle still following you, just go ahead and body him, and then you should be able to pick this thing up. People in FM, they do some stop, fire, fire shit on the gargoyles to make them not spawn. I've tried that. It does not work for me, like, at all. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, but I've tried it so many times, it doesn't work. So if you guys can make it work, go for it, because it's a lot better. But fly over to the switch and activate it to be lifted up to this area here. Take the next switch to be put on the elevator. We just wait a little bit until the wizards spawn. I gave myself one MP there by casting gravity just so Goofy would give me some MP. We're going to have to summon Dumbo a little later, so I'm preparing that as well. Alright, Goofy gives me that MP, and you do 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 on these guys. 1, 2, and then a full combo. If you notice they drop an item, definitely pick it up because it's an ether. Extra ethers only help in this game. The ether route is kind of tight, so... If you notice they dropped an ether, by all means, pick that thing up. Activate the switch again, and then just wait it out. After a nice, chill elevator ride, it's gonna boot you off to the staircase here. Walk up and grab this blue trinity. This blue trinity drops a mega elixir and two cottages. 
All three of these items are very good, very viable. We need them for the run, so pick them up. If you didn't get enough MP for Dumbo, get it from those bubbles there, and make sure you have your summon menu set for Dumbo. Take the lift up to the next level. Exit the room. And take the next lift. So here's where we do our first Dumbo skip. This is kind of hard for new players. I struggled with this a lot when I was new to the game. I'll bust out another clickbait error to show you where to go. So all you need to do is line yourself up with this corner and roll over there below the ledge and summon Dumbo. After you summon Dumbo, you have to center your camera. You have to press L2 and R2 together. Press down once to go to the summon menu and then confirm twice. You're good to go. Easy. Easy. Now we gotta fight Maleficent. So make sure you and Goofy are prepped up for this fight. Goofy needs full MP. Even if he's short, only one. Toss him in ether. And you need three MP. English is really fucking hard, so I'll start with English. Fly up to Maleficent. You have to do a full jump and glide slightly. Do four empty jabs, and when she starts to pimp slap, do the R's with five bashes. She's going to summon two defenders. Do another R's through the pimp slap. And do an R's with five bashes when she's using the meteors as well. Try to get behind her so that you don't get knocked off if you get hit by a meteor. If you get hit, it gets really sus, but the duck comes in clutch. Wait for the pimp slap. Do another R's. No bashes. Make sure you have one MP so you get your MP back. And then get behind her if she summons meteors again and spam some more R's out. This fight is really fucking hard. Like, I'm telling you, this is a really, really hard strat to get down. You just gotta practice it and get used to it. Now, the reason I say to do R's with only five bashes instead of six is because six can cause you to over damage. If you over damage her, it messes up her AI and doesn't allow you to keep her in the meteor loop. And it makes it to where this happens. She flies away, and it takes forever for her to become vulnerable again. Once she does become vulnerable, you can gravity her platform, but if you do this, it just messes up your MP entirely because it costs a whole MP. So, yeah, and she just, she just does not sit still when this happens, so it's really, really bad. You really gotta practice, like, keeping her locked down with the strats that I was showing. Otherwise, your fight's gonna go like this, and it's just gonna be fucking terrible. It's gonna be the worst shit ever. So... Yeah. You can gravity her platform, but like I said, your MP is gonna be all over the place. Notice how Goofy's already pretty much used up all of his MP. He can't even MP gift you very well. I'm having to keep trying to get to 1 MP just so I can use another R's. It's just terrible. Just don't let this happen. So Maleficent and JP is free as shit, of course. So just spam R's with 5 bashes. That's it. You win. Keep doing it. You gotta land your bashes. You can't drop your combo. But just spam R's with 5 bashes until she fucking dies. It's epic, bro. So just keep spamming when she pimp slaps, and you're good. Unfortunately, we have to fight this bitch twice. So put Beast in the party over Donald, unless you're afraid of dying, then you can keep Donald. Take Goofy's Ray of Light for Holy Circlet, and swap out White Fang with Ray of Light. Make sure you've got Stop Equipped and the Mega Elixir in your items. The so Dragon Mal is decently easy on English. You just stop her and do 1, 2, 3, stop over and over again. Refill your MP with an item when necessary. You'll see what I mean. Jump over the ground pound, and then just start the loop. 1, 2, 3, stop. One, two, three, stop. Keep an eye out on your MP. Make sure that you actually can stop. Like right here, I couldn't, so I waited a second. One, two, three, stop. And just keep it up until you and Goofy are both out of MP. Once you're both out, pop the Mega Elixir. 
Now once that's popped, you're pretty much good to go. Just do a ground stop to make sure that she stays stopped. If you try to jump again, she'll probably get a little too much height and get out of your attack range. But yeah, just keep going ham and you're pretty much GG. Pretty easy in English, but in JP this shit is a nightmare, and that's because stop fucking sucks. Stop is like ultra nerfed in JP. JP unfortunately has to be close to perfect for it to actually be a decent fight and for it to not get really scary, which sucks, but stop is just trash. But it goes the same. You do your three hit combo with stop, but you gotta do these combos as clean and as low to the ground as possible. If Goofy fucks you over like this and takes a while to give you MP, it makes this fight so much worse. The higher that Maleficent raises her head, the harder it is to actually make this a good fight. So try to like catch her as she's coming down. Notice how the stops last such a short amount of time that she often raises her head up out of your range. And the higher she is, the harder it is to actually keep her stopped because you can't do combos that low to the ground. But you can skip the fireball phase if you're quick enough. Fortunately, in this example, I was, but if she starts fireballs, there's not much I can tell you except keep doing the same strat and survive. Heal if you need to. You can bring Donald and JP if you really need to. He'll keep you alive with some cures, but that's all I can say for JP. The last fight of Hollow Bastion 1 is going to be Riku 2, so once we exit Maleficent's arena here, we're going to just switch our equipment around just a little bit. We're going to take off Ray of Light in favor of maxing out our offense. So we're just going to put White Fang and Brave Warrior back on. So we have full attack base equips and give Ray of Light back to Goofy. Make your way to the Grand Hall and make sure you don't fall off because if you do, you are fucked big time. Riku 2 is pretty damn hard in English, but pretty damn easy in Japanese. So let's go over both. I like to start the fight off here with two jabs. The reason for this is because sometimes the R's command takes a minute to appear, but these jabs give you plenty of time for it to actually appear, so you can activate your R's right away, followed by as many jabs as you can fit in, and then do a second R's with as many jabs as you can fit in. Once he's past the yellow HP gate, he's going to start an attack, and his hand will glow blue. Only attack when the hand is blue. Try to get as much MP back as you can before you start the loop here. The loop is kind of similar to Anti-Sora. You have to time your air hit to land when he's in his idle stance. No matter what, after four hits, Riku will retaliate. If these are ground hits, air hits, doesn't matter. He always retaliates, but you can keep him in a loop if you manage to get the first hit in by the time his idle stance comes up. If you get hit, you can still continue the loop if you catch him in time. If for some reason you're unable to do the full combo with finisher, you can do regular air hits just to force the retaliation, and you have a little bit of a window to do that. At the end, you want to stagger him once and then finish off with an R's if you've charged enough MP. If not, just keep looping him like normal. If you drop the loop while he's in green HP, he's going to DM. If you run into this corner, you might get hit by the first hit, but none of the other hits will hit you. Afterwards, you can get back to trying to loop him. If you take some damage, do not be afraid to heal if you're scared. Stay alive. You don't want to sit and watch a two and a half minute cutscene again because you died. Not doing ours is fine. It just is slightly faster. We want you to stay alive versus dying and getting bodied. So Riku's AI in JP is really beta. You start the fight off the same. Two jabs into ours. He just gets bodied by ours. Like, they just fucked up when making his um, retaliation, I guess. Notice how he does Dark Fyraga instead of the spin attack to retaliate there. When he charges the fire, go ham to get some MP. And then start the loop. It's done the same, except it's way easier to keep him in the loop. Like I said, they just... They made his stagger like super easy in JP in all of his fights. So it is like really free. You don't really have like a super tight window or anything. You can just body him. See here how I even missed an air combo and I was still able to shit on him. 
It's the same thing, just with a much, much easier timing, and you don't have to worry about a retaliation that will actually hit you. After the fight, Sora sacrifices himself for his homie and becomes a fucking creature. So when you're playing as creature, Sora, just follow my movements here. Exit the Grand Hall. Jump down in front of you and take the first doorway here. And here we just want to jump down. We just want to keep going down, basically. Down, down, down. Until we're next to the switch. Once we're next to the switch, we don't want to jump down anymore. We want to go to the lift stop here. And from here, we're going to go back into the entrance hall and meet up with... So just hop down and get into the cutscene zone so that you can get back to Traverse Town. We're going to get decreaturefied, and we're going to hang out with the Final Fantasy boys for a minute. Exit the Final Fantasy house and go to the first district. We got to talk to Sid regarding our gummy ship. So we got to find a way to get back to Hollow Bastion. So talk to Sid first. Do not forget to talk to Sid or else you're not going anywhere. Sid's going to want you to go to the secret waterway to pick up a gummy piece to install to the ship. We're also going to meet Kyrie here and get the Oath Keeper. Don't overmatch like I did and talk to Sid. That's not necessary. Roll up to this red trinity here and bust it open with the boys. In this alleyway, we're going to roll straight up to the Red Trinity that opens up the waterway. Just completely ignore all the Heartless. Just roll in as straight of a line as you can. Jump over the sign and keep going. Just roll, roll, roll into the grates. Once you're at the grates, just keep rolling for a bit until your party members appear behind you. Once they appear behind you, the enemies have despawned and you can open this gate with the Trinity. And once you're inside, just swim up to the left side here to grab the gummy piece Sid is looking for first, and then we'll head over to Kyrie to get the Oath Keeper. Once we get the gummy piece, just roll back over to Kyrie, and it's going to start a long cutscene, and then we'll get the Oath Keeper. Once we have the Oath Keeper, just equip that immediately. We're pretty much going to use it for the rest of the game. And head back over to Sid. Same way you came from. Just roll up to the boxes over here and jump over back into the first district. Talk to him one more time so he can actually install the gummy piece. Now you can head to Hollow Bastion again. This is the last time we will be at Hollow Bastion before the end of the world. Before we take the portal, we're going to have to slap a big-ass engine on our gummy ship. That holy G we picked up in Hollow Bastion, we're going to put that on right now. We only have two more gummy missions to go, but even doing this, it saves a good amount of time over the gummy missions. So go ahead and equip that holy G and then exit the gummy menu. Now we're going straight to the warp hole here. I'm pretty sure the beginning part of this gummy mission is sus. Every time I've tried to boost, it feels like it takes forever for me to actually see any Heartless, so I wait for them to appear before I boost. And you just want to make sure you enter this warp hole. This will throw you back over to the other side, the Hollow Bastion gummy mission. Just boost your way through, and we're going to be forcing ourselves to die on this scummy mission. 
Like I said before, you can't press start and quit out of gummy missions in this game, and it's actually faster to stop this gummy mission halfway through to get to Hollow Bastion. Don't burn your boost here. Wait for the next area to load in before you boost. Now you can boost. <clears throat> now once we get to about this point, we want to take some damage. I like to go to the roof here because it does a lot of damage. Take damage enough to where you have red HP. Just like this. So once we get to this screen, the screen that has a bunch of purple squares, this is where you want to die. This is where you would quit out in FM, but we can't quit out, so we just death abuse. So once we die here, we should immediately be able to warp to Hollow Bastion and save a lot more time over doing the rest of that gummy mission. We are almost there, gamers. Only this part of the game and the final world remain. So, instead of having Donald and Goofy with you this time, you're going to want to bring Beast and Goofy. Beast is really good at clearing big heartless waves and Goofy gives you guys MP, so... Follow the same platform that you did the first time here. If you're a little late on getting to this platform, it's alright, just wait a second. Yeah, just follow my movements and get up to the castle gates area again. Now this time we're going to be doing another Dumbo skip. So get Dumbo ready in your summon menu as soon as you get up here. And you're going to want to move up just until the Heartless spawn and then roll back up against this little pillar here. Now center your camera and rise up up against this pillar and dismiss Dumbo to let you grab the ledge here. You gotta be quick with this or else the Heartless will follow you and they won't despawn. So fly over to this switch and then just wait until your menu's blue. Now you can activate the switch and head to the elevator. So once again, touch the elevator switch to get put on. Now, what I like to do here is I like to try to line up Beast onto this triangle that I'm pushing him on, or in between the two triangles here. And this gives him a pretty good range for his Ferocious Bellow. His Roar, the Ferocious Bellow, has a huge hitbox, so you want to line him up somewhere to where it'll hit everything on the screen. Just like that. See how he pretty much hit everything? That's that's pretty gamer. So line him up somewhere to where his hitbox will hit the whole screen. It'll take out all those Heartless really quickly and you can just continue your elevator ride. Make sure you have 3 MP here. We are going to have another Dumbo skip coming up. If you don't have 3 MP and you have an Aether or something, you can go ahead and pop that here. It's not going to hurt anything. So just head back to the lift stop here, and we're going to go do the second Dumbo skip. Pretty much back-to-back -back Dumbo skips here. Alright. Once we're here, we're going to use the Dumbo skip on a slightly different area this time just because different heartless spawns so I go into first person and line myself up right here and roll forward up to the edge and do the Dumbo summon right underneath so I do it here because that defender is notorious for swinging his shield and bodying me so center camera rise up and dismiss easy peasy Now just enter the first doorways you see, all the way up to the Grand Hall. And the Grand Hall is where we fought Riku, but we're going to be entering that 
door to darkness type of thing and fighting the behemoth here. Jump over that defender lest he knock you off and fucking ruin your life. And yeah, just take this route I'm taking here. I like to go towards the left because we're going to be moving up the stairs anyway. May as well get the good line going. So we're going into this little darkness zone to fight your boy, the Dark Depths. So this is the Behemoth fight. If you haven't noticed already, you have to time each hit of R's Arcanum. So I'm going to put an input display on the screen just to show what timing R's looks like. So, at the start of the Behemoth fight, we're going to roll to his left at the same time that he jumps on top of us. So lock on to his horn, and when you notice he's in the air, roll to the left. Then start going ham with R's. And look at the input display if you want to see the timing for each R's bash. Stand still on the horn until he is still. Then use R's and finish it with regular air hits if you fall off. If not, just do bashes. Dodge roll out of the way of this laser and hop back up. If he bends his head down like this, he's going to lunge forward really quickly, so you have to react very quickly to this bend and hit another R's. Try to stay on top of him after you've landed and throw out another R's. Just keep spamming these R's and bashes the whole time pretty much until he knocks down. Same thing, land on the horn and wait for him to be still. Spam the R's with the bashes and attacks the best that you can. Dodge the laser. If it hits you, it happens sometimes. Sometimes it just spawns another one in your face. Wait for him to act and do more R's. Try to get out as many R's as you can with as much MP as you have here. Notice how Goofy's out of MP, so he's not going to be able to give me another R's. I just have to do regular ground combos to finish this fight here. But that's basically how it's done. No backups, just R's and spam his horn. That's it. After the fight, the princesses are going to upgrade our Fyra to Fyraga, and we're going to do a menu before End of the World. We want Omega Arts, Ray of Light, and Raven's Claw equipped onto Sora. So take Ray of Light back from Goofy, and make sure you have those three equipped. Then we're going to take some abilities. We're going to put Guard on if you want it. Equip both MP Rages and Second Chance onto Goofy. And then Cheer and Second Wind on Donald. These are very important. Swap Fyraga for Stop. And then we're good to go. So before we head to End of the World, I'm just going to point out that this is where you really start feeling the differences between English and Japanese. I'm guessing Japanese wasn't completely finished, so End of the World feels the differences the hardest. Be aware that I'm going to be going back and forth quite a bit between English and Japanese in a lot of segments here. Even just regular Heartless fights. I'll return this. I promise. So we have a bit of heartless fights to go through before the behemoth fight at the end here, starting with an invisible fight. This is the most optimal setup for the fight. Lock on as soon as the screen loads in to the right invisible. Swap targets with gravity until they all bunch up and you get an R's off. So that's really hard to do in this version specifically in my experience. It's a little bit better in Final Mix HD. But I just can rarely get that to work in this version, so what I usually end up doing instead is just gravitying the invisible in the middle and just praying to god that they all group up like they did here. The problem with this is, though, a lot of the time, a lot of them escape and end up DMing behind you. This wastes a lot of time, so if you can do the optimal strat, by all means, go for it, but the backup is to just do a gravity in the middle and just hope they all dive in on it. So you want to stand in front of this chest just like this. This is a power-up chest. We're going to use it for strength for the end of the game. We need this to boost our strength for the final fights in the game. And then from here, we're going to skip the next chest, but grab the chest after it for a Mega Elixir. We also need this Mega Elixir for final fights. Then just follow the direction the platform is pointing. My movement's not that great here. You could move a little closer to the right to get to this point. But once you get here, you get sent into an Angel Star fight. So I don't do the gravity around the room strat because I usually only have 3 MP. So I do 2 gravities per Angel Star and then take it out individually while Goofy supplies me with some more MP from MP Gift. So 2 gravities per Angel Star and then finish off with some physicals. 
That should be it. Now, face this chest here because this is the next area you're going to be moving towards. And you also have to grab this chest once you get sent back out into the main room. This chest also has a Mega Elixir, so we're going to pick this one up. Then from here on, we skip all chests and go straight to the end. Before the Behemoth fight, we're going to have to use a Pottage as well as the power-up that we found at the very beginning of this world. So usually right before Behemoth here, I'll just use the Cottage and the power-up together. And now we have another Behemoth fight. This one's a lot easier than the first. Start off with one gravity, and then roll over to his back foot here and just mash out gravities until his HP is green. Once his HP is green, hop up on top of his leg and wait for him to shoot these orbs. Once he lands, hop up and hit him with R's. Throw out your bashes like normal. Land on the horn as normal and throw out another R's. Spam bashes and air attacks until he dies. It's basically the same as the first Behemoth fight. Just you do way more damage because he's considered more of like a regular Heartless than a boss. He doesn't have as many resistances. That's really it. Quite easy. Follow my lead and roll down to the save point at the very bottom here. Make sure you're walking off to the left side, otherwise you're going to get trapped into some sus heartless room. Refill everything on the save point and head to the portals. So these portals just represent what keyholes you've sealed and which ones you haven't. Because of the fact that we never sealed Olympus Colosseum and Atlantica, we're going to have to enter those portals and clear the Heartless to continue. So just follow to each little portal entrance here until you see the blue portal. The blue portal is going to be the ones that we actually have to interact with. So here you want to make sure Simba is ready to summon. And once you walk in, summon Simba immediately. Like frame one, summon this dude. Because if you summon him too late, everything is going to be messed up and it's just going to suck. Now, since Simba is a little shittier in JP, it's also different slightly, so I'll show both. But for English, you just want to charge one ticks until all of the air soldiers are dead. So just do one tick. A tick I consider when Simba flashes. Once they're all dead, full charge to kill the rest of the enemies here. After this last wave here, just dismiss Simba and walk through the gates. After the first wave of air soldiers is dead, sometimes this defender will get really close to you. You can take a step back just to avoid getting hit by him and continue the charges like normal. Now the main difference with JP is that you start off the fight with two ticks. You have to do two ticks at the start for JP. Otherwise, you're not going to do enough damage, but for the rest of the way, it's the same. One ticks until everything on the screen dies, and then just full charges the rest of the way. Dismiss Simba and head out. Now, if somehow you fuck this up and you get destroyed by the air soldiers, which can happen, don't even try to fix it here. Don't even try to charge again. It's not going to work under any circumstance. Just dismiss Simba, leave, and come back in, and then you can try again. There's no point in trying once you've missed once because the air soldiers are just way too fucking cracked. So just leave and come back, and then you get a whole other chance to try again. It saves a lot more time over dying. After Olympus, roll to the next blue portal, which will be an Atlantica portal. Once again, there's going to be some differences between how they're done between English and Japanese. Japanese being slightly easier. In English, swim up to the Heartless on the right side, hit it with a gravity, and refires. 
and then try to hit two gravities off on these two and finish them off with fires as well. Then once the aqua tank spawn, gravity and fire, just the same. You should be hit by one here. That's okay because it means he's closer to you now. Just finish them off with gravities and fires and defeat the screw divers as well with fire. Now wait here until the screen flashes white, then you're good to go. If you don't wait, you have to fight the heartless all over again. So in JP, that is actually broken. So we're also going to move to the right and just kill it with pure fire because fire is a lot stronger and cheaper on the MP and JP at this point. So just kill everything in the room with fire. Then once the aqua tanks spawn, we can start the gravity strats. So we just do one gravity, finish with fire. And then we can head out before we even kill the screwdrivers in JP. I'm pretty sure this was an oversight here, but there's no telling. The next portal is the green portal, which is the 100 acre wood. Grab the Mega Elixir in here and refill all of your HP and MP on the save. This is very important. Touch the damn save. Because we have some hard portals and hard fights coming up right now. The last portal is the Hollow Bastion portal. This one's got a bunch of invisibles in it, so lock on to the invisible in the front and mash out gravities on him. You want them to all dive at you in the back here so that you can hit them with your R's and gravity together. Yeah, just spam those two abilities, gravity and R's from the back side of the room after they've dived onto you. You should be able to get into the next room. Once you're in this room, there's a chest on your left here that has a Mega Elixir. You need to get this. Then interact with this little podium. And two more invisibles will spawn. Spam them with gravities and then take them out with a few regular physical attacks. And then get ready to head out. If you have any extra ethers at this point, go ahead and use them. And equip MP Haste on Sora. This will drastically help the rest of the fights in the game. Make sure you prepare Arrow as well. Head back into the hole and get ready to fight Chernabog. This fight is sus. Sus 9000. Like in both versions, but in JP it is excruciatingly sus. Thankfully, we're going to start with English first. So right away, fly up to his face and make sure Arrow is prepped and ready to go. Then just hit him with three hit air combos. If he does Yoga Fire... Use arrow to tank the damage and the hit stun, and you can use gravity through the hit stun if you need a little extra damage. When he does yoga flame, get behind his head and just start whacking away because you actually do not get hit from back here, and you can connect attacks. Make sure you're at full HP at all times before he does anything crazy so that you can survive. He'll start moving his head side to side before he charges yoga catastrophe. Make sure you're fully healed and arrowed through that. And then tank the hit stun and do extra hits on his head the best that you can. Just keep whacking away. Yoga Flame, go behind his head. Just keep bodying, keep bodying. Now he's going to charge this wind attack to push you away. You can avoid this by going to the wall behind his head as close as possible, but I kind of miss it here. The closer you are to the wall back there, the less distance you'll get pushed back. So he's going to charge up some fireballs and shit, but if you did the fight well enough, you should be able to kill him before you get hit by any of them. Make sure you land down here as well at the end of the fight so that you don't have to glide down as much. Since I missed it, I'll show you what it looks like to properly avoid the air blast attack. If you fly up to the wall behind him between his head, then you won't get knocked back and you can continue slamming him. And also, if you somehow happen to under damage here and he starts throwing fireballs and does yoga catastrophe again, make sure you're full HP because this shit gets really scary. As you can see, I almost got hit by a stray fireball and died there. My party members are dead, everything is sus. So just make sure you're staying on top of your HP and arrow. So I'll show you why this fight is dog shit in JP. Number one, no night on Bald Mountain. Number two, this motherfucker has Sephiroth HP. Number three, his hitboxes are fucking trash. You can't go behind his head to avoid Yoga Flame or even attack from back here, period. The only time you can land an attack is when it's on his ear or like the side of his head. It's super inconsistent, it's super shitty. 
though. The only place you can attack is really the front of his face. The fight starts the same. Fly up to his face, make sure arrow's prepped, and just start whacking away with your three-hit combos. This time, since we can't go behind him to dodge Yoga Flame, we're going to have to tank an arrow through it. So just keep doing air combos until Yoga Flame's about to hit you and use it to interrupt your arrow. Then just keep going ham. He spams Yoga Fire and Yoga Flame way more in this version for some reason. So just keep tanking shit and stay in front of him. He also likes to push you away really early before you can even react to it. Notice how I almost died there. That was very stupid of me to try to go in on that. Just be aware of what attacks he's using and when. If you're behind him when he's doing Yoga Flame, you gotta fly in front of him and hit him on the forehead or the front of the face. Remember, when he goes side to side, it's almost time for Yoga Catastrophe. And notice how just now, I've only finally started chipping away at his health, so this fight is gonna take a long ass time. Full HP and arrow before Catastrophe. Get some extra hits in if possible and just have fun trying to navigate this fight with these terrible camera angles and terrible hitboxes. It seriously is like the main reason I hate running Jay is this fight. Like I'm not even kidding. This fight is so fucking ass. So try to go between his back there to not get pushed away as far like I did there. Keep spamming the best you can. Make sure you're staying in front to the best of your ability. Avoid all of these attacks. Make sure you've got arrow up at all times and just keep going to him. This fight is so much worse, mostly because of how much longer it takes. The longer the fight goes on, the more you get bullshitted. When he starts to spawn the fireballs is when it gets really scary, because 99% of the time you're going to be under-damaged here. So like I was showing in my earlier example, make sure you're fully healed and arrowed up that you can survive this catastrophe. Then you should be able to take him out. He might do double catastrophe. If he does, it's really, really scary. Try to react in time or else you'll end up like me, almost dead or dead. Luckily, I was able to take him out there, but you can just tell from watching that how shit that fight is. So after he's defeated, we want to put on a Mega Elixir for later and equip Super Glide, the new ability we just got from beating Glide down and follow my lead to glide through these holes here. Unfortunately, in PS2, we don't have a vertical camera, so it's hard to see where the hell you're going. But just fly down here. Then you want to go to each portal until you're at final rest. To each portal until you're at final rest. Now in final rest, we start with another behemoth fight, so hold square and fly to the right of him to avoid getting hit by his jump. Jump on his back and start blasting him with gravities until he's at about yellowish HP. Basically empty your MP bar here, get an MP gift from Goofy, do a few hits and start in R's as he's turning around here. Wait for him to rise his horn back up and start another R's, he's gonna, bit he's gonna immediately get knocked over. So land on his horn here, do another R's into some air hits if you fall off, or bashes, other, either way. Use the Mega Elixir immediately and roll up to this corner here. I don't do the corner you guys do in FM because it just doesn't work here. It's too sus. I, you could try it if you want, but I'm not a fan of it. So we just start taking out Dark Balls with fire here. Take out as many of them as you can. This corner gets us too, but I mean, it's the best I got. If you guys do it your way, sure, but defeat the rest of the Dark Balls. If you take too long, the Dark Balls in the back will disappear. Kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Take these guys out and get back in position into the corner here. Make sure stop is prepared just in case you want to use it. And start blasting gravities to get all these guys damaged. Stop them all and do as much damage to them as you can. I'm kind of stuck locked on. Stay alive. If you notice you get low HP, heal right away. And you have the option to stop this last invisible just to give yourself a breather and prepare to summon Simba. Or you can kill him right away, but you have to summon Simba the second he dies, like immediately. You do not have a lot of time to fuck around with this.
But once Simba's out, instantly start charging. Full charges. All the way. Five tick charges. But this should be our third full charge. After the third full charge, do a four tick charge. One, two, three, four, and then let go. This is because the enemies behind you are really fast in 30 FPS and they will body you. So just full charge the rest of the way and you should be done. But yeah, we need that four tick charge just to stun the invisibles and angel stars. Otherwise, we can get hit and get destroyed. So fly to the end of the room here and that is final rest. Pick up this chest after you've entered the Heartless Door for the final Mega Elixir. Touch the save and refill your entire inventory with Mega Elixirs and any extra ethers you may have can go at the end. You want to equip White Fang over Ray of Light and give Goofy Ray of Light and Brave Warrior. Then just walk up to the door, examine, and get ready for Ansem 1. Roll behind you and jump up to the secret place here. It'll cause a couple cutscenes and then just fly over to Riku Ansem over here. So in terms of final fights, Ansem 1 doesn't have any differences between English and JP other than being able to do more R's in JP due to 2 MP cost. But other than that, it's the same. After that, everything starts to get different. Endgame is Omega Sus. So if he starts off the fight by charging at you like this, just wait for him to swing, avoid it, and then do one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then do an R's anytime he brings up the Guardian. Try to trap him in this corner over here and just keep spamming him with air hits the best that you can. Do R's anytime Guardian pops up. And you have to be lined up with this corner here, but you have to be in front of him for him to back into it. He likes to back up away from where you're standing. Always try to be in front of him, but also lined up with the corner. That'll make him back up into the corner and limit his movement for the fight. And then keep spamming him in the corner. This is basically the whole fight. Air hits in the corner. Make sure he stays aligned with the corner the best that you can. And use an R's whenever he pulls up Guardian. This was basically an example of a perfect fight. Ansem didn't troll us very much. We were able to keep him cornered pretty much the whole time and we didn't have any problems. But I'll try to show you what problems arise and what you can do to fix them here. He starts off with Destructo Disc. Just avoid these completely and knock him into the corner. So I'll show you what happens when he breaks out. Sometimes ours takes a while to appear and it can cause shit like this to happen. If he breaks out, just try your best to line yourself back up with that corner and get him back over there. If that doesn't work out, which a lot of the time it doesn't, it's fine. You can use ours through Destructo Disc as well, but it can cause this issue where he becomes misaligned and everything gets screwed. There's a bootleg corner over here by the secret place that you can push him into and kind of try to do the same strat just over here. Just be aware it's way shittier because of just the geometry of the area. If you notice you're at 2 MP, burn some spells to try to get 1 so Goofy gives you MP back. And if somebody gets submitted here, just iframe through the submit with an Rs. Do as many bashes as you can. Usually I can only do 4. Rs completely iframes through that. So just anytime he uses the come forth shit, just spam Rs through it. Now I've kind of wedged him back in the corner, so I'm making it work a little bit. If you get submitted, then just same deal. Just use ours through this DM attack of his, and that's it. That's really the only things that go wrong here. After the fight, we have one last menu. Use a Cottage and equip Tornado on Goofy and optionally MP Rage on Donald. This is also your last time that you get to equip guards, so if you want to use it, put it on now. I don't like it because it messes up my movement.
We have a dark side fight before Ansem too. So you want to land six air hits on his left arm here, and then do an Rs with five bashes. Do three ground hits into an Rs with four bashes. Do three air hits followed by a full air combo into an Rs. Don't use an item after the fight here because we can't afford to waste any extra items. We need them all for endgame. Now, if Ansem starts to fight here with the blue lasers, just jump through the center. Start your stagger loop on him. You just want to hit him with air hits till he brings up Guardian. Once he brings up Guardian, go behind him and stagger him twice. And just keep him locked down like this to the best of your ability. Just don't knock him too far. If you stagger him three times, he gets blasted away. When he gets to a pure yellow bar of HP, that's when he'll DM. So right here, prepare to DM skip. To DM skip, you have to stagger him three times. Hold down on the analog stick on the last hit. And as soon as you see Sora's face, use ours. This should work. The next time I go for DM skip just to be safe is when his green HP is pretty close to the outer edge of the lock on symbol there. So I just do it here the exact same way and then finish off the fight. Now, if you miss DM skip for any reason, usually because of some stupid shit like this, you literally just walk in a circle. Literally just hold up left or up right on your stick. You won't ever get hit. And when he says, the final darkness is nigh, just do a roll and avoid the big gamer blast. And you can continue with doing whatever you gotta do. Also, if you somehow end up getting submitted, pop a Mega Elixir immediately. Just do this to make sure that you stay alive. A lot of people like panic and fuck around every time they get submitted, but if you throw an item like that and you fully refill your MP, you can Rs through the DM like you can in Ansem 1, and you should have enough MP left over to actually heal yourself if you need to. Just be aware that if you have to do this, you're going to get DM'd like 99% of the time. But it's better than dying, I guess. So I'll show you how this is done in JP, starting from Dark Side 3, because this affects Ansem as well. This fight starts off the same as English, the 6 air hits on the arm, the 5 bash R's, the 3 hits into R's, except this is the main difference here. We're going to want to do another R's. From here, we got to jump onto his shoulder. Do three hits into an R's, and then do an R's again to finish him off. Pop an Elixir or Mega Elixir if you have one here, so that you can have MP for Ansem. Now Ansem goes pretty much the same as well, he just has different DM skip gates. He also has a lot more HP as you can see. He's got like the Sephiroth Chernabog thing going on where his HP doesn't deplete for a really long time. So the main difference in how this fight is handled in JP is you want to stagger him from the front and when he pulls up Guardian, go behind him, stagger twice, and then Rs. This just increases your DPS by a lot. Rs costs only 2 MP in JP, so you can really abuse it here. Now his first DM skip gate is about at the halfway point between pink and orange. So I do that here, skip the first DM. If he charges at you, you can guard it or you can clank it just like that. Roll away from the mitts. I don't like rolling towards them like everybody does. It's optimal to do that, but it's scary. His next DM skip is about halfway to green and yellow, so I do that here as well. And then you just finish off the fight. This fight's a little bit thus in JP. I kind of think it's a little harder just because of the HP being kind of wonky, but it's mostly the same other than the R's shit. Now we're at the final stretch for real, World of Chaos. So I'm going to show World of Chaos in its entirety in English first and then Japanese versus going back and forth between the two. Since there's so much different here, it's just easier to show the differences game by game. Fly up to Ansem and prepare Arrow. Do three air hits and cast it. And then try to get as many air hits on Ansem as you can. Even while he's spinning around like this, you want to try to get some air hits by standing in front of him. 
timing them right when he's flopping around. When he says welcome to darkness, heal because he's going to throw lasers at you and you don't want to die. Keep throwing out air hits, get as much damage out as you can. And if you get him past half orange HP here, you're going to skip a phase later. So heal and cast arrow before this next lasers. You can tell he's about to shoot lasers by his audio cues. And make sure you heal before these lasers as well. And then just go ham. Do full combos with finishers here because the lasers are going to interrupt you anyways. So you may as well go ahead and try to get the extra finishers out. Make sure you heal before the fight's over. And we're going to attempt cutscene skip here. Fly straight down and then walk up to the edge of this platform. past the wrinkles on its head. And as soon as you see the game start to enter slow-mo mode, just press X. Just press the attack button. This should work every time. And to me, it's a lot easier than the roll people do. So in this room with the shadows, just wait for them all to hop in on you and then use R's and just take out as many of them with R's as you can. Target switch around and try to spread your R's out the best you can. If you're out of MP, just start doing air hits on them like this. Use gravity on the little portal and make sure you use a mega elixir. Use that shit right away. You need it for artillery. At the start of artillery, we're going to do a little bit of complex menuing. We're going to fly up just a little bit, cast arrow, and then prepare blizzard. After that, land at the middle here, and R is the big cannon. Get really close to the next cannon, and R is that one as well. And then use gravity on the side cannons here. You'll probably get blasted away, that's fine. You're just really weak in English, so it's kind of hard to get these guys without getting knocked away. Aim at the middle cannon here, and then clean up. So, pop a Mega Elixir, frame one. As soon as you can, make sure Blizzard is set, and then head into the next room. We're gonna get Goofy back here. For Dark Balls, I actually use Swift's strat from Standard Final Mix, so shout out to them. Uh, you just want a Blizzard pretty much all around the room. Just throw Blizzard at all of the Dark Balls all around the room, and then once they dash in at you to retaliate, just start spamming some R's out. The Blizzards tell them to come to the back of the room here, and since R's is so good in PS2, you can just take full advantage of that here and just clean the hell up. You can fire if they're too far away, and look out for any Mega Aethers on the ground. Definitely worth picking up if there are any. Use uh, another Mega Elixir to prepare you and Goofy for face. And then get any extra MP you can from hitting the portal. For face, fly towards him and cast arrow on yourself. And I like to cast arrow on Goofy as well. Ash triangle so Goofy starts going ham with the tornadoes. And then just fly around doing air hits on the face until you run out of arrow. You can try to move side to side to dodge the lasers. I'm really bad at it personally, I'm just going to be honest. You guys know how to do it, you're going to be way faster than me. But just keep going him. Recast arrow and heal at some point before the big explosion here. Just to be safe. Just clean up. And just finish up with normal air hits like this. Make sure you and Goofy are Mega Elixir before the fight. It's better to do it when Face is dying, but it's fine. Now for the Invisibles, turn around and just start blasting gravities. Just start spamming these fucking shits, because these dudes are brutal. Just keep spamming, do air hits and R's if you have the MP for it, and that should be that. Look out for any Elixirs they may have dropped. And you can use gravity and fire to take out that portal. If you have enough MP to break the core, save your Mega Elixir until afterwards. Fly up to the little shitter core. Make sure to avoid these cannon shots the best you can. It's kind of hard sometimes. Lock on, do two gravities and let them deal their damage and finish off with air combos. Now you can fly away and do a Mega Elixir. I fly away so that my party members don't waste their MP on bullshit. 
Now the last fight, Handsome 4. Cast Era right away. Fly to the left side so that the lasers don't start bodying Goofy. You want them to attack you so Goofy's Tornado can actually start going ham. The more Tornado damage you get, the better. When Ansem spreads his arms out like that, make sure you heal. Just get as many air hits as you can in on him while he's trying to blow you away. Be holding forward so that you're flying towards him here. Try to swing at his hand because it will actually do damage if you land. The more damage, the better. Throw a Mega Elixir right before he blows up the bomb behind you and then just finish him off. Use Arrow if you're afraid for any reason, but you shouldn't need to. That is it for English. So before we finish this, let's go over JP's World of Chaos. So this shit is kind of sus in JP because the camera is just terrible. But prepare Arrow and do your air hits. I don't cast Arrow as early in JP because Ansem has more health. So he's going to go through more phases of bullshit. Also, the camera kind of makes it annoying to get the arrow. Cast arrow before he shoots the lasers, and then start going ham. Everything at endgame in JP has Sephiroth health, so now I'm finally dealing damage here. So I should still have enough arrow to last me this laser barrage. Could run out just at the end here. If you get him past half of purple HP, you'll skip the bats and go straight to this longer laser phase here. Refresh your arrow at some point during these lasers and just keep going ham. Camera is just complete dog shit. Just be aware of that. It makes cutscene skip way harder to do as well. So you gotta like force the camera to be in the right spot for this and then just do that attack when the game slows down, but you can make it work. Cutscene skip saves like 20 seconds, so you really want to get it. Same deal for the shadows, just dodge out of the way and spam them with as many R's as you can since R's cost only 2 MP in this game, it's a lot easier. And one thing you'll notice about JP is the drop rate for items is cracked as fuck. So defeat this portal and Mega Elixir up. If you picked up any Mega Potions from the Shadows, burn those as well. I didn't do either of these things in this example, but just know you have to do that shit. We're going to be spamming ours on these Shitter Cannons here, so we need full MP. So fly up a bit, use Arrow and prepare Blizzard. I didn't do it here in this example, my bad. R is the middle cannon, and it should take out both. Then just roll to each side and take out the rows of smaller cannons. You want to use that R's at the start to tank through the Wind Blast so you don't get knocked away, by the way. Use a Mega Elixir after. Then fly up to the portal, and we're going to be using the Swift Blizzards again. They're even better in JP. So just blast these dudes with Blizzards. Try to hit the whole room's worth of Dark Balls with Blizzards so they get pissed and start attacking you in the back. And then just let loose, just go hard with these R's. R's only cost 2 MP, so just go stupid, go crazy! Once you've taken them all out, pick up any Mega Ethers you think you might need, and take out the portal. You can heal yourself and Goofy with Mega Ethers or Mega Elixir, it's up to you. Item drops are really frequent in JP, so I usually just use Mega Elixir, I don't really care that much. Just make sure you guys are healed up enough for face. The face is quite different in JP. Cast arrow on yourself. You can cast it on Goofy if you want. I cast it way closer this time. And then I just go stupid, go crazy with the R's, bro. This R's on top of his head. Roll out of the way of the attacks that he uses with the lasers. Do some bashes if you can fit him in. And just keep spamming Goofy to give you more MP and also to do tornadoes at the same time. Once Goofy dies, I Mega Elixir and just keep going in. I probably could have fit another R's in there, but it's fine. Keep using R's. Keep getting the, that tornado damage. If you get knocked off like this, just switch to the English strat and start doing regular air hits. Make sure you cast Arrow before the big gamer blast and finish him off. R's on the head is really fun, but it's also kind of wonky. Sometimes you fall off and have to do this shit. So this time, I'll try to throw the item correctly, so just wait until face, wait until his jaw drops, and then throw the item. 
That should prevent Goofy from wasting an MP on Tornado. So now you don't have to waste time here throwing another item. You can just go to the Invisibles. Invisibles are pretty much the same. Just turn around and blast these fools with fucking gravities. And ours as well. Ours is 2 MP, so you can just have fun. Take out the portal with gravity and some fires. These guys drop a lot of elixirs, so you can pick those up if you really want. It's not necessary. And this time, we have the little shitter core. The little shitter core and JP is extra, extra shitter. It has like 2 HP. So we're just going to fly up and beat the shit out of it. Do a gravity and wait for it to do its damage, then finish it off. Make sure you guys have enough MP and shit to go ham on Ansem and prepare for the end. So it goes basically the same. Use arrow right away. Triangle to tell your boys to go fight and head to the left side. Avoid the lasers the best you can and just do some hits on Ansem. When he spreads his arms out, make sure you're full HP because he's going to start blowing you back with some sus attacks. And just keep going hard. Just get those extra hits in the best you can. The camera's gonna get fucking weird because it's JP. Get your Megalixir ready to keep you guys alive. And mash triangle again to tell your boys to go ham one more time. Then you just end the fight like normal. Just do your air hits until he's dead. You'll probably have to cast arrow here because he has a lot more health. The fight lasts a lot longer. But you can go you can get by without it as well. Camera is so cringe, but you made it. Congratulations. If you made it to the end of this tutorial and you really still think about running this game, you're a fucking Chad. And that is it. That is pretty much all I know about these games. I tried to be as detailed and descriptive as possible, but naturally there's just some things and some situations you're going to have to learn purely through experience. Thankfully, Kingdom Hearts on the PS2 has an emulator leaderboard now for both the English and the Japanese versions, so there's a lot more accessibility and more of you could give this run a try. I'm going to be releasing a bounty to go along with this tutorial. It's going to go into effect a week after the date of release. It's going to be for the English version only. The top three new runners on the emulator leaderboards that don't have runs on console will be able to compete for three placements of a cash prize. First place will get $120 with a $50 bonus from DJ Salty Nuts, totaling for $170. Second place will get $60, and third place will get $20. These amounts are in USD. DJ is also throwing an extra bounty for whoever can get first in Expert. They will also get an extra 50 bucks. So get grinding gamers, and I hope you guys have fun. Thanks for watching.